Welcome everyone to the 2023 Men's College World Series presented by Capital One. On a glorious evening, you couldn't ask for more and you could certainly make the case this is the most anticipated game in Omaha. Non-finals we've ever had. The overall number one seed and LSU. It's a must win in order to get to those finals. And on the mound, two guys are going to be pitching at the major league level very, very soon. The most dominant pitcher in the college game on the planet against a guy that has never lost this season. When he's on the mound, his team is unbeaten. How'd we get here? Wake Forest had what appeared to be a pretty good advantage coming into last night's game. And Griffin Herring showed up and shut that dream down. A Beloso blast, and LSU survives, trying to do what they did in 2017 and knock off the overall number one twice to get into a finals against a Florida team. They lost then. If they get a chance, they hope, obviously, to win a crown. That's Kyle Peterson, Chris Burke. We'll hear from Chris Budden in just a minute. If you're a college baseball fan, if you're a baseball fan, and you hear Paul Skeens and Rhett Louder, you say, sign me up. I'm not budging. This might be kind of fun. I mean, we got excited last night. You don't become fans, but you become fans of this matchup. It could be the best pitching matchup we've ever seen in Omaha. For Paul Skeens, he's the best collegiate pitcher I've ever seen. Three strikeouts to break Ben McDonald's LSU record and the SEC record for single season strikeouts. For Rhett Louder, they don't lose when he's out there. 18 and 0 this year for the guy that will be a first rounder himself. First rounder against first rounder and two of the best in the country. Decent evening, gentlemen. Wake Forest came in with one of the best offenses in baseball. They just lost Nick Kurtz a few minutes ago to a rib injury. We'll tell you about that more in detail in just a couple of minutes. And the team hasn't hit it all. LSU has hit enough. Yep. And they got the guys that can hit it over the wall. Yeah, enough about the pitchers. Let's talk about the bats, right? We got two of the best in the country. Dylan Cruz, second in the country in on base percentage, will probably be the first pick in the draft next month. And Brock Wilkin, the ACC's all time leader in home runs tied for the National League in home runs this season. We got some real dudes in both lineups. Absolutely do. Draft picks all over the place and a must win game. Louder Skeens, Wake LSU. And the story on how they both got to this point in their lives with Chris Budden when we come back to the College World Series. Welcome back to the Men's College World Series. Paul Skeens had two dreams as a child, to play baseball and serve our country in the military, which is why he chose to go to the Air Force Academy. That was before he realized that he would be the number one pitcher in the country, and the dreams of playing the MLB became very real. But it was an emotional decision for him because he made a commitment to our country, one that he plans to honor when baseball is done. All I wanted to do was serve. Um, I have family that was in the Navy. It was a tough decision for me to walk away because it felt like there was unfinished business a little bit. It's almost like I had two dreams. Baseball, you only get one go around. The military, you have multiple opportunities. And it's, you know, it's a, it would be really cool to serve. His pitching coach from Air Force made the trip. Ryan Forrest, he was out on the road recruiting. He got a call, said, you got to come to Omaha and see your guy pitch tonight. All of Air Force is watching, rooting for Skeens tonight. Coaching staff said he will always be a member of Air Force Academy. Yeah, he's got a great backstory. And that guy right there, Ryan Forrest, who you just saw, said of Skeens, 90 to 91 out of basic training. He said nobody comes out of basic training throwing 90 to 91. All you do is run and do push-ups. He was throwing 95 in the fall and Christmas. He's a one of a kind guy. Sounds like my day, run and do push-ups. <laughs> that was today for Skeens. He's a little bit more than 91 right now. He's a big leaguer and he's going to be soon. But you're going to see tonight why he could be right now. He's as dominant as I've ever seen at the collegiate level. His last start here in the College World Series, 46 pitches of 100 and more. Oh, by the way, the changeup and the slider are pretty special too. So the Wake Forest lineup that he's going to deal with a little different all of a sudden Tommy Hawk Lucas Costello and instead of Nick Kurtz hitting in the three spot and prior to the game during some swings he re aggravated a rib injury that he had suffered in the Alabama series and as a result he's not going to be in the lineup and our Capital One batting order is different than it was literally a half hour ago and it certainly took Wake Forest and Kurtz by surprise and it certainly changes the dynamic. I mean you're talking about taking 24 
homers and 69 RBIs out of the lineup. This was before the game. But Walter took him down the tunnel. There were tears. He is available apparently off the bench, but that's a big blow when you take the number three hitter out of the lineup. And a world class first baseman. Yes, sir. Like he can really yep. defend, too, so it's more than just the bat. Fight. All right, Tommy Hawk seemed to find something last night, and we'll see Skeen's first pitch to him. Huh. And a fastball right out of the gate, 99 miles an hour. Hawks four for 12. He's 333 in the series, 353 on the year. He will go the other way. Had a hard hit ball at White last night. Late and he caught it. There's more paint, and that's 100. And this one is too shallow left. The sun is awful, and oh, wow. it literally drops 10 feet in front of Josh Pearson. He had no idea where it was. And that's something to keep an eye on now. Any ball hit in the air to left field. Brutal part of the day for left fielder Josh Pierce. Just helpless there on a ball that should have been an F7. But Tommy Hawk with new life. Interesting. Fastball, steady diet. Against Tennessee, he went slider changeup to get ahead, then All fastballs. Five. And that one misses inside. He threw more changeups in that Tennessee game than he had the entire year yeah. in a game. And, and the changeup was probably his best pitch that day, and he hit 102. That's how good that one was. And a 1 2 to Hawk, the leadoff hitter. This one is put up, and it's the center fielder, Cruz, who has no problem with the Sun there to make the play. One up, one down, 125 pitches. So he threw on Saturday. Kyle talked about the 100 plus and the fastball average. Hunter Green and Miller in the major leagues, the only two guys that have averaged that in a start. Sometimes, as impressive as it is, the pitchers will tell you, I'm not trying to throw 99. I don't need to throw 99. Skeens does it real easily. And this one is fouled straight back. Actually, if you if you go back to his last four starts, yeah. he's that's his average fastball. So yeah. it wasn't just like the adrenaline of the College World Series. He's been doing this for a month. Ninety nine point six average fastball for the last month. Costello gets into this one. Let's see if Pearson can pick it up. Looks like he's got a good beat on it and he does just shy of the track. Two up two down both on fly ball outs. That both. Looked like it had a chance when it left the bat. The, the wind right now kind of right to left, yeah. but certainly didn't look like it helped that ball, even though Costello seemed to hit it on the sweet spot. So Brock Wilkin goes from hitting cleanup to now batting third. Kurtz is out again with a rib injury. He had been 0 for 9 in the World Series, and maybe that rib injury had been bothering him. So here's Wilkin. And there's the first slider at 89 in there for a strike as you see Kurtz now a spectator. The hitting coach Bill Salento gathered the team right before they came out and he said this is going to be our rallying cry. We're doing this for Nikki so that we can play another game. Yep. Skeens fastball <laughs> on the corner his hardest one of the night he went over a hundred to one oh one a one two three inning and now it's Rhett Lauder's turn to take the bump just what we thought when we come back. NCAA men's college world series presented by Capital One what's in your wallet and in part by Burger King. As you take a look at the 1955 Wake Forest team, they went 11 and 3 in conference, 29 and 7 overall. Linwood Holt, first team All-American that season. They beat Western Michigan 7-6 in the final game to claim the championship. And here is Rhett Lauder, the junior, 6'2", 200 pounds. And when Rhett Lauder was asked why he chose Wake, guys, in spite of how great he's become, he said there was really nobody else that wanted me. 
They were wrong. They were wrong. Because he's really good. Uh, over the course of the season, we talk about Skeens. Ladder's a lock first round or two. Velo may not quite be there, but it's only going to be in the mid 90s. I'm sorry. <laughs> really good two seam fastball, bottom of the zone. He is a big leaguer as well. Batting order brought to you by Capital One, Cruz White. Morgan's been terrific. Dugas Pelosos got a hot bat and had a big three run home run. Joe Bear and Morgan have more extra base hits in the World Series, each of them, than Wake Forest does. And louder to Cruz to get going. He throws that one at 95 and misses down and away. Four for 15 here in the World Series is Cruz, and this is as good a bat to ball skill as you're going to see. Rolls one over, and that's by Wilkin. The shortstop, though, is there. Safe. And that's another aspect to Dylan Cruz as he beats it out. This one might be a look here. Wilkin goes do or die and waves by it. Nice job, though, by Houston right behind him. Oh, I think he quick stepped it. I think that I think the foot gets in there just in time. Oof. You got to look to it, don't you? Yeah, he's safe. He's safe. They're going to go base hit there on that one as Wilkin missed the first chance, but obviously a clean opportunity. He's challenging the ruling of safe at first base. The previous play is under review. They got bad info there. They did. Let's talk about the good info, though, with the number of surefire first round draft picks top <laughs> of the draft coming up when we're in Seattle for that. And you're looking at a guy at first base, a guy on the mound. There's a handful of others, but let's focus on this game and what makes him so special right there. Yeah, I think it's I think you said it the bat the ball, the pitch recognition. He almost never chases his chase rates about half of a normal division one player. I think the ability to hit the ball out to the big part of the ballpark has really uh, been a feather in his cap this year and and I think the walk to strikeout ratio and the ability to continue to get better than that and his career is all the reasons why people love him number one talk to me about his BP today but not yet after review the ruling at first base has been confirmed safe Wake Forest has used their first challenge they have one remaining so yeah his BP today was hit one ball and it actually kind of looked like that to the left of second base. It was as disciplined a middle oppo approach as I've ever seen from a college kid especially one with that much juice. Well there's a lot of juice in this bat too. Tommy White he's the third baseman. And that pitch misses. So when Louder first started against Stanford he may have been feeling under the weather. They alluded to that after the game. It took him 31 pitches to get through the first inning. And it just never looked right. Now this guy is not eligible for the draft this year. You'll get him in 2024. A ton of interest out of high school. No team match what he wanted. So he went to NC State, hit 27 homers there, broke the freshman record. That's where Tommy Tanks, the nickname, came from. 74 RBI, 54 runs, and then he hit the portal. And that's a good pitch, locked him up there. That's where there's a little room. If you can get it in there, and we've seen it a few times against Tommy White this week, and it, it better be in there because if not, it'll wear you out. But if you can get it inside black and let it run off, it's tough for him to get to it. One, two, and how about that? A little slow slider at 87 to strike him out. With two seam in on the hands before and then drops the slider. And watch location. I mean, it, it's it's one that you can handle. It was more the velocity that got Tommy White. How far out in front he is on this one. Slider, louder kind of falling off at the end, first strikeout and first out of the game is Tommy White. That brings up Trey Morgan having a terrific College World Series. Six for 14, a couple of doubles and a triple. It's a 429 average for the junior out of New Orleans. All right here. This is uh, the time of day where the hitters are really at a disadvantage. And you, as you said at KP, that was not a well located slider. Tommy White. Never saw the dot on that breaking ball. He swung at it like a heater. Advantage. Th these are two of the best pitchers. Obviously, the game has to offer, but even more of an advantage today with the shadows. Louder throws to Lee. Wilkins at third. Marek Houston's at short. Justin Johnson at second. Jack Winne is at first. And this one is caught by Winne. He went up just like Nick Kurtz does. 
and steps on first. Spider-Man Jr. over there at first. How about that? I, you know, losing Kurtz, he's put on a show for us this week defensively. These are the kind of balls you wonder if is going to be able to make the play. How about the range and the athleticism? Leave the ground, young fella. It is NBA draft night. Yes, it is. Climb the ladder. His only start came April 15th at Louisville. And he's 0 for 1 in the NCAA tournament, but that'll kind of shake off any nerves. Gavin Dugas' cruise moves to second. That's filthy inside, but it misses. 1 0. No! No! The development of Louder, just one of the big stories for Wake Forest, and another reason they become so popular with wannabe Major League pitchers. Great slider. Ha! Yeah, pretty good selling point, right? right. 84, 86 out of high school, and now yeah. he's the back-to-back -back ACC pitcher of the year and a surefire first rounder. That'll sell in a living room. <laughs> and Dugas rolls one over. Wilkin is able to get it before it bounces the second time, and he fires across the diamond. Good inning defensively. Cruz leadoff single, stranded at second. Louder, like Skeens, leaves with a zero. assassin's mind with all the uh, talent in the world and uh, the preparation of a Navy SEAL you put all those things together and, and you put together the, the greatest college pitching season that I've ever seen. There was literally no doubt that Skeens was going to start today because Jay Johnson put, had a meeting on Monday after the loss and they drew it out on the whiteboard. He said Tuesday put down pitchers from the bullpen Wednesday pitchers from the bullpen Thursday put Skeens so we do that we're headed to the championship series. He also said I'd be a little bit afraid for my life if I told him that he wasn't going to start today. <laughs> yeah no there's no doubt he had confided yesterday if I don't start him he's going to kill me. <laughs> he throws to Bennett behind one and oh. Ha! Now one ball one strike. And look Skeens was a work in progress too right the Olerud winner I mean this was a two way player when he was at Air Force he was also a co pitcher of the year in the conference but he acknowledges he says I'm addicted to finding edges. High chopper and a charge. Yep, fielded cleanly and white. Nice play. Good stretch as well over there at first base. We're seeing some defense early as White finds Morgan. Tommy White showing you some range. Got to get to this one before it gets to the ground. Well done. Organize the feet. Throw back across your body. And Trey Morgan's been doing this for three years. The flexibility of the Tiger first baseman is special. Skeens will now throw to Danny Corona. Is that a change up there? Mm -hmm. Sir. At 88. So you're going to see this from LSU. We've seen it over the last few weeks. Dependent on pull side and, and whether it's a right hand or a left hander. They will flip flop Jordan Thompson and Gavin Dugas up the middle. So Thompson is a shortstop. However, right now he's playing second base. They'll see more ground balls that way and they're expecting that from Corona. Oh, that one misses outside and it's really just Dukas kind of banged up his shoulder and isn't throwing quite the way that he had before there. So they're, they're trying to put Thompson in more positions to where he can feel the ball. Yeah and use that range. Dugas is a little limited because of that injury you're talking about. Corona's two for 11 and he took a big swing at that 99 and fouls it back. So it's two balls two strikes. But because. Skeens is on the mound. It's so dominant. We're going to have a very special guest join us in the top of the third to talk about what he's seeing. One of the great power pitchers in the history of baseball. Roger Clemens will give his thoughts on Skeens and Louder. That's in the third. 2-2. Two, two. He didn't really think this Thursday would get any better. Yeah. How we got the rocket coming on? <laughs> rocket makes everything better. All right, put yourself in the batter's box. How do you prepare for a Paul Skeens? If you can't hit the fastball, you're dead, right? So you, you got to be prepared to get the barrel to the front of the zone quickly, and then that happens. But you got to live with something, right? You can't take it all away. You got to be prepared for the heater. You're probably not going to deal with the changeup when he throws it this well anyway, KP. No, I mean, this he just wins right here. Yeah. That's it. If he's got this one and you combine it with the other one, he wins. If he throws it in that spot right there. 
That was the difference maker in his first start. I mean there's a lot of difference makers but it was one of them. The change up was he threw it more and it was as good as it's been the entire year. He and Ben McDonald now side by side for the SEC single season record with his second strikeout. Pretty good chance. I bet he's uh, probably going to break it. Ben's going to be number two. <laughs> yeah. Real soon. Justin Johnson, junior out of Glen Gardner, New Jersey. Looking for his first hit here in Omaha. 0 for 12. That oh. is, ooh, he gives him that call. Slider appeared to be a little off, but he's ahead 0 2 and now trying to set the record. Trendsetter, mustaches, and scheme pitches. Is that like one of those eye black things? Yeah, just put it on the stash. Oh, I don't think you should do that. Now you got to get a little curl to Why it. Why would though. you do that? Because Paul Skeens is pitching. I mean, uh, that doesn't look very good. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, oh, and no. he will not chase there. Two balls, two strikes as he yanks one. That's it, the new SEC single season record. Through two innings, he picks up three strikeouts. His coach at Air Force probably could have seen this one coming. 203 and counting for the great Paul Skeens. <laughs> Just some fun outside. That's the uh, Bob Carey pedestrian bridge. There was a move to rename it, at least for the week and a half, to the KPB. The Kyle Peterson Bridge. Voted down. And you said no to that. No, that was voted down. Unanimously. You got a jet ski out there? Two of them. Two of them. It's good to be Kyle Peterson here in Omaha, man, the mayor of the city. We'll start with Beloso, who went yard last night, and the first pitch is off. It's Beloso, Braden Jobert, and Jordan Thompson as we start at the bottom of the second inning. Five for 12, 417. Double homer, four RBIs for Beloso, and he's just locked in. You can see his takes are good. This feels like I think we need to circle Beloso and Joe Bear. I feel like if, if Rhett Lauder is going to get through this lineup, he's going to have to navigate these two lefties. Two guys that have no problem getting below a sinker and getting the baseball elevated. Off to a good start here if you're Kay Beloso, well ahead in the count. Jay Johnson said there's just no team out there like Wake Forest that makes the decision between a strike and a ball so difficult. Three and huh. one. Oh. At the knees. Yeah, I think there was a little hesitation. Yeah. Beloso said, oh, I can't throw the bat yet. Let's see what Travis Roniger has to say about that strike call. And there you go. We are in full Tiger regalia. 3-2 pitch. Good take. He's aboard with a first walk issued by Louder. That tells you how much they respect him, KP. That's a 3-2 that's a breaking ball to lead off an inning. 2-0 and 3-2. Well, the other very noticeable part about Louder, of course, is his hair. He said he just didn't like getting haircuts. He had to come into school, gain weight. Knew he had to improve himself. And that is in there for a strike. Just didn't like getting haircuts, huh? Didn't like it. <laughs> Mom and dad were on board, especially when he moved out of the house, he said, because his hair wasn't getting all over the laundry and stuff. And this one's to Johnson, who will go to Houston, who will fire to first in time. Double play. Well, that's a big 4-6-3 right there. Lead-off walk is erased by this Demon Deacon defense. It turns it. Watch, flip the hips. Ac accurate throw to Houston, who shows off a big arm to get Joe Bear. This is one of shortstop's got to grab their fastball. Get squared up and throw it downhill. Well done right there by the Wake Forest shortstop. And here is LSU shortstop Jordan Thompson. He rolls one to his counterpart, Houston. And a good inning after the walk. Looking forward to the conversation coming up here. On nine pitches, Louder threw it. 
Here's a guy that knows all about pitching. We'll talk with Roger Clemens about the two studs on the mound tonight after this. Of course the great Longhorn pitcher Roger Clemens went on to that amazing Major League Baseball career and this is a guy that lives eats sleeps baseball still to this day of course with his kids playing but very active in youth baseball very active in the Longhorns and you can see the 83 Texas Horns there and he's going to join us to give us his insights now into guys like Skeens and Lauder what a treat Rocket how are you thanks for doing this doing good guys thanks for the invite it's uh, you know Omaha special there's no doubt about it even after all these years you never forget about it it's 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 something special and even when your team gets knocked out how uh, people there in Omaha continue to come to the stadium and, and uh, support everybody. All right, give us your thoughts here on Skeens. Physically, he's a little bit like you. He's about 6'6", 247. He talked about getting to know his body. He talked about sleeping, wow. all these things that allow him to have this magical year. You take it from here. Yeah, well, that's a lot of body to get to know. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Man, that's, a, that's a big human being out there, and huh. he could probably play tight end if he wanted. Uh, but I think Berkey said it not uh, just the last inning. I think both these guys have come out and, as advertised. I mean, uh, what's the saying they said? They, you know, talking about I'm 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 coming in here tonight to. Uh, Chew gum and kick butt, and I'm all out of <laughs> bubble gum. <laughs> you know, so uh, they're both ready. I, I love what um, I love what Paul does. If you watch it, the viewers watch. As big as he is, there's a, there's some gas down the middle. Yeah, I mean, I think you got to go with your best stuff. Obviously, his fastball with this shadow. You guys talked about the shadow earlier too. Mm. It's a big deal. And uh, again, he's got great, great control of his body. If if uh, when you take a look, the thing, the first thing that I love is his toe tap, fellas. He's got a toe tap yeah. where he sets and gets his balance. You'll see him tap and then put his foot right down where he wants. And mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. he's balanced. The hey, next what? thing you'll notice, the next thing you'll notice, KP, is you, you know this stuff too. And it's, it's simple math. Yeah, here, you'll see this. I love this. Yeah. Mm. He's staying back in a big situation where you want to rush and just throw the ball through All the catcher's out. mitt. He's he's toe tapping, so he's staying over the rubber. That tells me he's he's calm. Uh, he understands what, you know what he's doing. I mean, they're they're mixing in some breaking pitches already early in this game. Don't really have to because as you can see, the sun is still on the pitcher, so it's difficult to see spin. This one is hit hard. That one's going to get down into left field. Merrick Houston is shortstop. And hey, Jack Winnay, I should say. I'm sorry, Jack Winnay. Hey, Rocket, when you watch it, the, the thing about Skeens, I mean, obviously his stuff jumps off the chart, but he's walked 19 guys and struck out 204 this <laughs> at this yeah. level. I mean, it's control with his command. Good power stuff with yeah, incredible yeah. command. Yeah, I but, heard like during the season, four guys or something. That's that's insane. It's insane. Um, we've had the discussion about, okay, what do you do with him in Pro Bowl? Like, do you send him to the big leagues now? Does it even make any sense to send him to the minor leagues? When, before you got to the big leagues and after college, what did you learn between college and then when you got to the big leagues? KP, good question. You know, when I was when back in the day, you know, um, they had um, some pitchers that came up. Who was the the, the famous uh, left-hander for the Rangers way back when? And they rushed. They brought him to the big leagues so fast that um, you know, and he, he ended up getting hurt. But I, and I think that slowed people down where they started pushing. Yeah. You know, taking us to. A couple starts at each level. Right. Oh, a close plays at first. Is it David Clyde you're talking about? There you go. Yeah, thanks, Ravi. That's him. David Clyde, you know, came up quick. Take a look at this replay. When A nearly got picked once, they went back and oh, ooh, I out. may have it. Yeah, got picked there. But They're not going to challenge. No. <laughs> so what would you and, do and, with him? And what would you do, what would you tell him as far as you know? I mean, when you watch skis, like what needs to get better before you look at it and say, you know what, let's put him in the big leagues now. Yeah, I think you got to. I, I, I still think you put him at each stop for a couple starts, see how he fits in, and and uh, and then and, and then bring him on that way. Another thing he does great is that front shoulder. If you yeah. look at his front shoulder, his steering wheel. I mean, I, I, when, when when guys 
if there are kids, 12 year olds to guys in the big leagues talk about that front shoulder, that steering wheel, that front side's quiet and this whole backside's the power side. And again, it's something that's easy to teach, but a lot of guys don't do it. Ha! Three balls, that's one also, strike. It also makes that, that two seamer away that's coming back door on righties, uh, as Berkey would know too. And it's the same thing when you're, I mean, he's burying that shoulder. It looks like it makes a right-handed hitter feel extremely uncomfortable. Whether he throws 100 or he's throwing 90 miles an hour. It's a slow roller, and White will go to second to first. And call him out. We'll take a look. Houston flew down the line. Man, this one feels like Wake Forest may challenge. Skeens, in fact, doesn't look like he's walking off the field. A lot of close plays early in this game. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think this one's going to get overturned. Tommy White did all he could do right there. Dugas with a fantastic turn. Yeah, yeah. that foot arrives a half step soon. Rock, you're talking about that. You're talking about that lead shoulder. I know you used to talk all the time about the ability to to hide the baseball, right? And and I think sometimes that's where the radar gun lies because we'll see dudes throwing 96, 97, but hitters hitters will talk about getting an early look at the baseball, right? Whereas uh -huh. guys like yeah. you and Skeens, you've got velo and you have such a a tight front side that the hitter just doesn't see it, right? Until the ball's almost out of the hand. That's right. You're showing the, the, the viewers exactly right, Berkey. They, and you have that late life. You, you, and not that, I mean, again, uh, you know, Paul's throwing 100 miles an hour. We get it. But when the ball gets to the dirt coming in on you, hitter, it, change, it changes gears. And uh, you, you have to be in the batter's box to understand that and see After it. After review, the call will be reversed. To safe. Yeah, there you go. Wake Forest will attain their challenge. They Rock, still have one. Rocky, you got to do me a favor, man. You, yeah. you can't compliment Berkey when he's talking about keep, pitching. Keep mechanics. it going, Rock. Yeah. We can't. We can't do that. <laughs> no. hey, All right. Listen, listen. What'd you I say, Rock? I nailed it. Just I keep going. I have to compliment my man. We would still be playing an 18 inning game in Houston if my man didn't throw one in the. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. My, four, my 45 year old body would still be out there trying to heave stuff in there. You did all right that day, Paz. We did good, baby. That was good one. A lot of people bring that game up quite a bit. It's uh, that was a special <laughs> game to say the least. Berkey brings it up all the time. Stop. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You know there who I go. am. That's the way he starts a lot. Do you know who I am? <laughs> then it just kind of goes on. From there. Uh, you can only use that twice a month. <laughs> so Rock, what about the split? You watch Skeens throw that that change up and your, your pitch obviously was the split. Would, would that be something that you would toy around with, with if you were him, just knowing the size of his hands and, and, and the effectiveness of that pitch? Absolutely. And, and again, he's quick on his feet. You see these pickoffs, the first base is dynamite. Um, and the only thing he's got to be careful with his front side when he's throwing a few of his change up early, if that shoulder flies a little bit, it's going to pronate more. It's harder for you to throw strikes with that. This is out of play. You know, Rocket, he threw 46 pitches, 100 miles an hour. Everybody is fixated on the radar gun. And when we asked him the other night about his arm and concerns, et cetera, he said, I have no concerns yet. Any concerns from a guy that made a living doing this for somebody that throws so hard, or does it come so naturally easy you wouldn't? Not really. Not, not, not at all, because uh, let's see what he does right here. Mm. Oh. Breaking ball. So, I mean, the thing is, it's great that you throw 100. As you guys know in the booth there, guys in the big leagues can put wood on a bullet. Yep. So it's great that you got that gas. Uh, right now, again, in big leagues, they pinch you east and west. He'll get that high one, and uh, that'll help him down the road. But he'll, he'll find out eventually that you still have to pitch. You've got to be a power pitcher. You don't throw, especially with the pitch clock. I found so many guys already. You wouldn't believe how many guys I've talked to via text or on the phone. Uh, major league pitchers that are having trouble uh, learning how to, to pitch with this pitch clock. This one's popped up. White may have a chance, and it looks like he will, and that will be the third out. All right, Roger Clemens back to break down this guy, Rhett Louder. We'll continue our conversation with the Rocket. Wake zero, LSU zero, as we head to the bottom of the third at the World Series. Men's College World Series. This is arguably the biggest non finals game that they've ever seen in Omaha, given the names of the guys on the mound, given the number one overall seed, and certainly the idea that the winner moves into the championship series against the Florida Gators. 
This has been historically dry in Omaha, and this is just another Chamber of Commerce night. Roger Clemens continues to join us in this conversation. Kyle Peterson, Chris Burke, Carl Ravitch, and now we focus on Rhett Louder as each team's got one hit, no runs on the board. And Josh Pearson leads off, and he hits this one hard on the ground to first. Rocket, one thing we talked about a lot with Wake Forest, this idea of pitching labs. All these kids are exposed to everything that major league pitchers are exposed to. You, of course, lived in a different time. Tell us about some of the things, the advantages these guys have, and how their development improves so quickly. Yeah, I'm in the middle of the road on the analytics. I'm not top end or bottom end. I, I like hearing it, but I still believe that at certain times throughout this game, you got to go out to the mound and, and look in a kid's eyes and give him an eye and a heart test, find out where he's at. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Rhett, I love Rhett. You guys said he's 6'2". There's no way. First, two, one thing I love about him is that hair. Yeah. Uh, he's about 6'4". <laughs> he's got to be 6'4 with that hair. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, the thing you really like about him is uh, I like his shoulder tilt. When he comes out, he, he's closed very nice, his front shoulder. That steering wheel is good. And he's got a little tilt right here. I love it. That takes a lot of pressure off your arm and elbow. Getting ground balls there. Yeah. Houston makes the play. Take another look at him pitching here, Roger. Yeah, take a look at this. You're going to look at that close. Makes you very uncomfortable. A little shoulder tilt. Turns it loose. Some of these guys, you see them swing the first base a little bit, both of them. Mm -hmm. I'm not big on that. A lot of the young guys do that. The college dudes and, and minor league guys, they kind of swing that back leg over towards first base. We're always taught to go forward a little bit further, gain another four inches. Uh, of the ball coming off your fingertips and let your back leg kind of get over the bucket, if you will. If you all remember that, I, I know you guys heard yeah. that before. Yeah. And uh, but some of these young dudes, they swing at the gate um, over to the side a little bit. Um, you know, nothing wrong with it, but you could clean it up. You could go towards that hitter another two or three inches. It'd be a big difference. Here's a really good hitter, Dylan Cruz. And he challenged him there, 88 miles an hour. Great sink on that pitch. Shadows are starting right to. Yeah, it was. And Shadows are starting to uh, get back towards second base now, it looks like. A one on the ground. They played that beautifully. It's dropped. Now they fire to first, and they do get the out. Hey, Roger, this has been great. Thanks so much for spending time with us, buddy. Thank you, Rocket. And it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Welcome back to the NCAA Men's College World Series presented by Capital One. Joined with Jay Johnson. Uh, two aces going against each other, uh, second time through the order. What adjustments you need against Louder to get some guys on base? He's doing a good job of keeping the ball down, but keeping it in the zone. we got to get him up over the plate and hit the right part of the ball. This is a many ground balls as I've seen us hit all year long. So credit to him, and we just got to get him up in the zone. You've been so complimentary of everything that Skeens gives you in the dugout on the mound. How does having him out there change the mentality of your dugout? We play with a ton of confidence all the time, but it's triple when he's on the mound. He's just a special guy, and he's bought into the team. So on top of being the best pitcher in the country, it's real easy for these guys to get behind him. Thank you, Jay. You got it. He's a one and done guy. I mean, this is uh, the NBA draft, of course, you know, the one and done player. This is a Skeens. And we may be very well looking at the last time we see him in a Tiger uniform. On the bump. Well, I guess you're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, I missed, I missed the bigger think picture there. Right? Him right now. <laughs> it wouldn't, wouldn't be a terrible idea. It'll be Costello, Wilkin, Bennett. And that's a filthy slider and you get a swing like that from Costello he flew out his first time up you're seeing the whole package here from Paul Skeens tonight the SEC pitcher of the year and the same pitch he didn't offer at that he's broken Ben McDonald's SEC single season record tonight coach Schlossnagel 33 years in coaching the one two is put into play Cruz ranging over there to make the play. Schlossnagel likened him to Strasburg, Mark Pryor. Those were the two. That's the list. And Paul Skeens. That was it. Well, let's go to London a little bit. A little Sunday in London. And that is where Tim Kirchin already is. He's probably asked to see some of the Royals, or they've asked to see him. <laughs> 10 a.m. Eastern time for the Cubs and the Cardinals. 
And then of course game two of the College World Series here baseball tonight will be on a few times and our Sunday nighter as Los Angeles Dodgers hosting the Houston Astros great baseball day on ESPN on Sunday 99 Wilkin this is this is a major league matchup right here. Doesn't it look like he's just playing catch at 99 right now. Yep. Like there's actually there, there's more in there. It is as comfortable 100 miles an hour to home plate as you'll see. Oh no. And he's got that. One two up in the zone put up in the air. Cruz with the wind blowing in not nearly as hard as it has the last couple of nights but another easy out. Florida awaits the winner of this game and the Gators are probably as happy as anybody watching this showdown to be watching this showdown. Yeah they were big LSU fans last yeah. night. There's no doubt about that. They wanted to see this game. Two down. Gets the call in the corner strike one. This is a Wake Forest team that did not lose a series in ACC play all year. Yep that's 0 and 2 and they are 10 and 0 following a loss. And in those games after losses they've outscored their opponents by 74 runs. 0 2. They're the only division one team guys that did not lose back to back games. Like that's impossible. Yeah, that's uh, that's an impressive number. Facing Skeens a day after you take an L is a little different scenario. Yeah, I mean, if you're thinking about breaking out of a slump, and this is a team that's hitting sub 200, um, not your guy. Probably not. Not the time <laughs> to raise your hand and say, "Put me in, coach. I, I feel it tonight." You're right, though, Kyle. He, there's no sweat going on here. I mean, it's a very comfortable 52 pitches so far. And that is going to go foul. I think both guys have been as good as advertised, right? I mean, this is everything sure. we could ask for. Both of them filling up the zone. Louder getting ground balls like you would expect. Skeen's getting punch outs and fly balls like you would expect. Both these guys have looked like they are on their A game. One two to Bennett. What's he going to throw? He comes inside with it. It's a coincidence that his first appearance on the mound was February 21st of 2021 schemes and it was against LSU. He came in to close the game. He picked up two strikeouts. It was his first save. He did give up a solo home run though. You know who he hit? Yeah. It's center fielder. Dylan Cruz. Skeen's still mad he didn't throw him another breaking ball. <laughs> Cruz will have that one over him forever. On your head. You know, you go to the Little League World Series and they have the pitching machines. And when you know you're facing a dude that throws it really hard, they turn up. Is there a way to prepare? Oh, yeah. Yeah, these teams will do the exact same thing. There's no question about it. That's actually a, a huge improvement, I think, while we see hitters face velocity with with much more ease these days at two two this one poked to left uh -oh. and he had trouble seeing it. Oh Josh Pearson had it lost it and then buried it in his glove Skeens off the bump LSU to the plate bottom four still zero zero. Hope you're all enjoying the night. We certainly are here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is the College World Series. And all right, we got one here. Rob Anderson on the Twitter. So far, this College World Series, we've seen Burks inside the park homer matched. And Ben McDonald's SEC record for K's a race. Feels like I need to check to see any of 
Miles <laughs> Marks <laughs> in Omaha. We're broken. Well, the Cardinal were here. Any I used to, I used to like Rob Anderson. <laughs> Anything? Yeah, I really liked Rob Anderson. I don't know that I do anymore. That came flying in from the back bench. No one tanks lifts this one high to left field. And it is caught out there. For the first time, LSU is retired on a ball that actually wasn't hit on the ground. That's what you get with Rhett Louder. I mean, he can really tie up the right-handers, especially. That was an uh, uncharacteristic ball in the air. But, boy, has he executed the game plan perfectly to this point. Winner of this one will take on Florida. Game one of the College World Series Finals. Best two out of three starts Saturday. Trey Morgan. Ball. Ali McDaniel has Louder somewhere in the 11-12 area as far as his draft position currently. Obviously subject to change depending on what the teams are doing. The Skeens, Cruz, Langford conversation is going to be a fascinating one. Good fastball there in on a fist. Yeah, you don't lose on that one. You don't. I mean, we've, we've talked about this plenty. I think it's a great year to pick third. Who's left? Oh, good. We really liked him, too. <laughs> we'll take him. Yes. You're with us. One, two. Yep. Yes, sir. Ah, yeah. Cam, and that's another yep. strikeout. Heard Trey Morgan last night calling the balls out when they yeah. were coming in. This one, uh, this one kind of surprised him. You said two seamer moving away from the left hander, and that is locking somebody up right there. Glove side, stick it there. Starts, starts just off the plate, comes all the way back. Second strikeout of the night for Red Lauder. Fourth game in four days for LSU. That's a good pitch right there at 89 miles an hour. Threw him a changeup. LSU's got. Five wins over number one national seeds, which is tied with South Carolina. And there's a good one in there. Slider 0-2. And this is this is the vintage. This is the yes. best Rhett Louder here. And the like the pace and the energy. I mean, you could tell he is in total command right now. And Dugas into left, and that's gonna get down. Gavin Dugas, third hit of the College World Series. And he's aboard with two outs. Maybe. The LSU Tigers can start to, he, he just, he's pointing to his eyes. Maybe they're starting to see the spin here. Watch him extend the barrel, right? Release the top hand, keep his chest down. Watch the chest get closer to home plate. Extend the barrel by releasing the top hand. Dump it into left field and oh, a little headbutt there with the Chief over there. Mark Wanaka mm -hmm. at first base. Interesting seeing how he's pointing to his eyes. Like that's either I didn't, I mean, it has to be that he saw it. Maybe he's. Or he needs his glasses. Or he needed his glasses. Maybe That's what be, it was. Please, please bring me those. <laughs> I can't see anything. Okay. <laughs> glasses for base running. All right. That one was oh. right in the middle of the plate. And Beloso took it. He pitched him very carefully his first time up. Cade Beloso, the DH, has got five hits here, including a homer, and he's got four RBI. Ooh, oh. That's a nasty two seamer, isn't that? 95. Unhittable pitch for a lefty. Decent ball to strike tonight. 29 to 8 for Louder. We talk about skeins in the walks this year for Louder. It's 22 walks, 137 strikeouts coming into this game in 113 innings. He's walking about less than two per nine this year. His next strikeout will tie him with Hartle, 140. For a single season mark there. That's down though, and it's two balls, two strikes. Hurting Mike Buddy's feelings again. I know. I didn't Buddy comes him. into this thing. He's the single season strikeout leader. Now he's third. He's here tonight watching, crying a little bit. I saw him before the game. Yeah. Take a back seat, Mike. How about an 89 mile an hour changeup? We saw a slider, two seamer, change piece. He's got decent stuff, Rev. This is kind of fun. Burke's uncomfortable, and that's what I like. Watching guys just <laughs> deal like this on both sides. Skeen's up to 100. Louder showing you can get it done a lot of different ways. 95 on the fastball, 89 on the change. We are scoreless through four. That was a hazy deal. <laughs> Welcome back to the NCAA Men's College World Series presented by Capital One. Join with Tom Walter, knowing you have to win today, but there is a series ahead. How did the conversation go to give Rhett the ball today? 
Well, he wanted the ball. There was nothing we could say or do that was going to keep him from pitching today, and he's our guy. Kind of figured that was the answer. What's the game plan against Paul Skeens? How hard is that? We just got a battle. You know, we've had we've gotten into some good counts and, and taken some good swings. He's obviously really good. We just got to keep fighting, try to run his pitch count up. For Kurtz, the, how did the conversation go with him? He said, I'm good, I want to play. How did you tell him that he the best thing for the team was to not play? Yeah, I mean, he couldn't rotate. I mean, that young man's heartbroken, and I'm heartbroken for him. He was in tears wanting to be in this game today and help his teammates. But who knows, maybe we'll get to him late in this game. I appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, door open for that possibility, and the first pitch swung at and a sky high fly ball out there into right. Everyone's waiting for it to come down and it does in the glove of Braden Jobert. Well he's available right yep. and you know it's that that's it's a good sign for for two reasons for Wake Forest. Number one it must not be so bad that he would be out even if they were able to advance and number two it's a nice card to play late in the ball game. Sure it's a great card yep. to pull. But Jack Winnet has been fantastic. He's He's got their only hit, and he's made a couple of nice plays at first. Got one start all year. <laughs> a start for the freshman coming in. Hey, here you go. Skeens to go to the title game. Yeah. Exactly. Title series. Take him deep if you can. One ball, one strike to Justin Johnson. Five consecutive fly ball outs for Wake Forest against Skeens. That was up in the zone. That's going towards the gap. Joe Bear's not going to be able to get it. Johnson goes to second. He takes a turn and stays right there. He was looking. But a good hard hit ball into the gap in right center and a man in scoring position for Wake Forest. 0 for 13 to start his College World Series, but he gets a hanging breaking ball. And boy, is this a great sign for the Demon Deacons to see. Justin Johnson stay on a breaking ball use the backside gap a rocket into right center field and that's going to bring on Jay Johnson to have a chat with his big right hander as Demon Deacons have their first chance with the runner in scoring position. You mentioned that Johnson had been 0 for 12 coming into this and then all of a sudden after not having any success his first time up with a strikeout he delivers a big blow. And the way that Louder's pitching, I mean, we've had games like this. You realize, you know, you get one or two. One's a lot tonight. It feels like a lot. One feels like a lot tonight. <laughs> yeah, you're all in to score first right yeah. here. <laughs> Bennett Lee, he was the star the other night with his tag and a bounce pass there from Wilkin against LSU and then he had that big hit too. They'd love to see him deliver another one in the left field. That's down. One ball one strike. Well, he's one of those kids that came over from the transfer portal. He was a catcher. His good buddy is Manassi on this team and how he found out he was available. And one quick phone call later said you need a catcher. Yes we do. We got on the phone with Walter and lo and behold Bennett Lee became the backstop on this Wake Forest team. Fairly important to Wake in this College World Series. Huge right. Team went and hit made an unbelievable play at the plate. He's led this pitching staff the entire year. There were eight teams here when we started. Florida still left these two. Stanford TCU Oral Roberts Tennessee Virginia all go home and watch one ball two strikes Skeens delivers and that slider is no swing. You guys saw the dominant Skeens outing is there any difference between that one and this one Velo's down a tick. I mean, still throwing 99, but yeah. you know, the other day he was kind of living 99 to 102 the entire game. So it's down a little. Secondary stuff has been outstanding. There's a hundy. I think we've had, I think that's our third. Right? He has not thrown as many changeups tonight yet. And some of it is just based on lineup. I mean, there's, there's more right handers in this lineup. 3 2 on the ground. Fair ball. Long throw. And is caught by Morgan. 
as White was able to throw it all the way in the air to the first baseman, and as a result, Johnson stays at second. All right, so we've talked plenty about Paul Skeens. Guys, he throws 100, but watch location on these fastballs. I mean, early it was dot, dot. It's not just arm side. He was doing a glove side, too. And then comes back off speed. And this is a difference maker. The changeup, they haven't thrown a ton, and then the slider, he's got plenty to swing and miss. It is everything you would want to see out of a college arm. Well, how would this story be? Jack Winnet, who found out about 10 minutes before the game he was going to start, he already has one hit. He looks at a slider in there for a strike. He's already made a big defensive play. How about taking taking Skeens and bringing in that first run? This would be some story right here. That one is going to end fair. up going yep. into fair territory. Yeah, it started foul with some good spin on it. And it ends up right in the glove of Morgan. So they will strand the runner at second. Paul Skeens, Rhett Louder, as advertised. Bottom five coming up with Donuts on the board and just four hits. All the Marlboros on the line here. Wake and LSU. Florida gets the winner, 0-0, just four hits in this one. Gators and LSU did not meet at all during the regular season. So if they... Uh, they see LSU. They hadn't seen him yet, and they hadn't seen Wake Forest yet. That'll be at Saturday, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Game one, best two out of three on ESPN. Game two during the day on Sunday, and if necessary, game three will be on Monday night. Joe Bear, Thompson, Pearson. All it's out. And Louder still throwing 93 with a two-seamer that goes outside. How about 41 pitches? <laughs> Bottom of the fifth inning. That almost looks like a misprint. Well, the hope was, could he get them through six? And then they, they've got the bullpen lined up exactly the way they want to. Roland Massey and Manassi at the end. But, boy, at this rate, he's going to get more than that. You know who he's, he's pulling an Ackenhausen right here. I mean, that was, that was the story for LSU. They needed a big start, and they got Ackenhausen, who was ridiculously great. And then Herring and the rest last night out of the bullpen. Johnson said LSU if we just can get these guys lined up in the right places in spite of they had a whole bunch of injuries that it is taken off. I mean this bullpen is on fire right now. Yeah just just a little confidence right it's contagious. I think there's something about staying on this mound that gives pitchers a little added confidence especially with the conditions Two, two great pitch another strikeout. That's his fourth and he now holds the single season record at Wake Forest. Pretty decent week for Mr. Louder. Goes back to the slider right here. So he's got two different off-speed pitches. He'll throw to lefties. We th saw the changeup just before that. It's right over the top of that slider. Four strike out of the day for Rhett Louder. The single season all-time leader at Wake Forest. That may be temporary. That yep. ball is a fair ball. And it's fielded cleanly by Wilkin. And he throws across the diamond. That is the second out in the bottom of the fifth. You want more coverage of this NCAA Men's College World Series? You can find those great interactive brackets there as well. You go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. It is the greatest show on dirt, and at least it's the greatest show on the mound tonight. That's for sure. <laughs> we can verify that. Carl. Ravich, Peterson, Burke, Budden. And the first one misses badly. And there's a very good chance, obviously, Wake Forest continues. We may not see louder, but this record may go because Hartle will be back on the bump at some point. You guys mentioned how the pieces line up. This is a starting staff that loves to turn it over to the bullpen. I mean, they talked ad nauseum about how comfortable they are and the trust and the development of Manassi at the end of it. Yeah, they, because of that, they haven't had to overextend louder all year long. You don't go 18 and 0. You don't go 15 and 0, KP, without the bullpen making some one, two, three run lead stick, right? Whole lot of depth in that Wake Forest bullpen. Yeah, 
what Louder's doing so well so far is he's staying away from barrels. Two balls, two strikes. And this one to center field. And Hawk came in and now backs up a few. And that is a graveyard for baseballs here at Charles Schwab Field. All right, you like pitching duels, man. This is the place. Call your pal. Something's got to give, but so far, nothing across through five. All right, uh, we have the Golden Spikes Award finalists, and uh, they're all here. Caglione, Skeens, Cruz, Sunday, June 25th, 2.30 Eastern time, it'll be announced. We'll have Ben McDonald as part of that with our buddy Kevin Connors. That will come up just before game two of the College World Series finals. Marek Houston squares to bunt, and we just threw one right by him there. He watched it buzz by, probably heard it. And it's 0-1. Guys got a favorite? Who do you think wins the Golden Spikes? This guy. Skeens. Yeah, I, I think in a year where offense was the story and home oh, runs was the story, the guy who was this dominant is, is the winner. I think Cruz is going to win, but I think Skeens should win. Interesting take. 0-2. Oh, yep. Yes, sir. Oh. KB. Yeah, part of what Paul Skeens does is for every strikeout, he donates money to Folds of Honor. And after the game the other night, it became such an attention that $10,000 from fans all around the country donated so good. to yeah. that Folds of Honor. His goal was to reach $20,000 by the end of the year. He's now at $24,000 because of everyone watching. That's a tremendous story. As Tommy Hawk looks at a slider in there for a strike. Folds of Honor is a nonprofit that gives academic scholarships to spouses and children of military and first responders who were either killed or disabled. His commitment to the military and also recognizing, guys, the platform that Paul mm -hmm. Skeens has. Yes, and is doing going to good have. with it. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, that will only grow. You can just tell that the kind of human being Paul Skeens is. He's going to make a, a difference in a lot of people's lives. Oh, that did not miss by much to Tommy Hawk. About three straight sliders. Backdoor breaking balls, like the, the command of a, a flamethrower, a 21-year-old flamethrower, it's just remarkable. One and two to Hawk. Yep, he chases. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts, and that is filthy. This is good. He, he threw him three straight. He throws 100, folks. He threw three straight sliders, and then he did it again. Four straight sliders. Tommy Hawk's like, hold it. Hold it. You know how hard you throw? You don't have to yeah. do that, too. There's a fastball in here somewhere, yeah. he's thinking, right? He had a pretty where, good where smile it? on his face, too, out there. He struck out four of the first seven and then kind of got away from the strikeout thing. And now two more here. Huh. And we'll paint it 98 to Lucas Costello. At some point, it's not the worst idea to kind of slow down the Skeens machine. And really, the last time we saw Salento get together with one of his hitters was when Bennett Lee went out there and said, my boots are shaking. You know, can you tell me a story? Put your arm <laughs> around me. And he did. They smiled. He got that big, huge game-winning hit. This is Bill Salento recognizing the rhythm, the incredible rhythm that Paul Skeens has fallen into. Let's take a look at last start to this start. So on full rest against Tennessee, 46 pitches of 100 plus. Tonight, a few days shy of full rest, just 11. So not, not his A-plus velo tonight. <laughs> Sorry. But a lot of balance on that one at 99. And look, there's a whole thing about pitchability, and that's what he's shown tonight. Yes. Exactly. Yes, he has. He just did it again. Probably going to do it again right here. Showed you a pickoff move. A really good one a couple yeah. times. Like, he does the little things, too. It's not just the raw stuff. There's so much more to it. Missed the last few glove side with a fastball, so he throws a slider in there, and that one goes to the seats back here behind home plate. The 
He's got a couple of uncles that served in the Navy, Mike and Pete. His Uncle Dan was a member of the Coast Guard. I heard KB say he's going to honor that commitment once baseball is over. Three balls, two strikes. But along the way, he's going to make a lot of money and probably uh, make a big impact at the major league level. Eighty third pitch of the night for Skeens and that's a good effort to foul it off. It was a hundred by Costello. He's had a heck of an A.B. right the, the yeah. timeout by Bill Salento. Maybe centered him up and this this A.B. has been very competitive. You think about the perfect storm though. Wind blowing in. Skeens and Louder locked into their games. Shadows. You're going to have to put together two or three hits. Yeah. yeah. Unless you yank one down that really that right field line, it's going to be hard to get one out of here. On the ground, a nice hop for White. He throws across the diamond, and Skeens continues to deal. And his pitching coach at Air Force had a big hand in how this guy's developed, and man, has he developed. All the images from Florida, they've been seen all over social media, Sports Center, everywhere else. Catch by Robertson at the wall. And the Florida Gators looking to claim a national championship. Kevin O'Sullivan and bring it back to Gainesville. Saturday, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. The Skeens Louder Showdown continues now with Malazzo, the catcher, who's been. Move to the nine spot, 6 3. He went out the first time. And then we turn it over to Cruz and White. All out. You can see the way that Brett Louder came off the mound last half inning, how currently comfortable and confident he is with his stuff. Tug that one. And you can see his frustration. 2 4 8. Milazzo, the redshirt junior. It's interesting. Jay Johnson has gone defense here behind the plate. I think the the conditions have had a lot to do with that. It's such a tight margin game because the ball isn't flying out of the ballpark that Hayden Trubisky, who's really been the guy the last six weeks or so, has given way to Malazzo, who's more the defensive specialist. Three and one. That's in there for a strike. Three and two. I think two. I think we heard that Trubisky might be a little banged up. Well, how about that? Good battle back there where it looked like perhaps Louder had been losing his his arm slot. He gets it back. He battles back and he gets Malazzo to fly out. I think what makes Louder so good too, it's it's one pitch adjustments. Check this out, KP. See if this does anything for you. Dylan Cruz homers this year. You can see where he likes to leave the ballpark. It's pretty much just left of center. To the right field line. So 18 homers, only four, what you would call true pull side homers. And you can see the uh, the plan against Cruz today for Louder. Keep the ball down and keep it in. And that's where you got to go right there. That's the heat map of Dylan Cruz. The blue is where he's actually pitchable. You got to keep the ball down and on the inner third. Well done right there. You're welcome. Great circle. You're welcome. Fantastic circle yeah. by you. 0 oh, 2 and he challenged him that's up the middle cut off Johnson nice play wow. Justin Johnson took a hit away from Dylan Cruz. So again trying to crowd him right that's the game plan against Dylan Cruz this one's more middle it's in but it's middle and Cruz maybe not quite the sweet spot part of the bat but credit Wake Forest perfect positioning Justin Johnson able to range up the middle to finish that one off a nice strong arm to finish that play and that is a big out recorded by Rhett Louder. Here's another guy that can go the other way and lose the ball over the wall Tommy White. Ninety eight runs batted in on the season. And a three sixty five batting average for White who struck out and flew out to left. 
four for 19 in the series. Pulled off a little bit there to even it up one and one. It's a historic combo here, Cruz and White. Yeah. Cruz with 90 plus runs, White with 90 plus ribbies. I mean, that is one of the all time duos in LSU history, those two hitting back to back all year long. Well, Jay Johnson's seen some hitters in his day. He talks about opposite field power and guys that go the other way. Your graphic showed Cruz. He says Cruz is the best he's ever seen. He says Bryant, Chris Bryant is right there. He said Tommy White is another one who's in that conversation. One, two, and there is one the other way. And that one is peeling into the corner. So White hits first, takes a look, and he will put the brakes on at second. But there is that power the other way. And a two out double. And this makes that play by Justin Johnson that much bigger, KP, right? You retire Cruz, or it'd be one nothing right now. 104 mile an hour rocket. A change up there out over the plate. Tommy White with a little scissor kick, keep the chest down, move the barrel with a beautiful direction the opposite way. And now the Tigers have a runner in scoring position. How about Rav foreshadowing right there. All over it. Big old scouting reporter. You, you're good at this TV stuff, Rav. <laughs> <laughs> Not your first game. <laughs> We've seen this too before when there's any any agitation. A pitching coach, Lascaro will come out and he will he'll just tell stories. You know, he'll get everybody on board. And there's no evidence that Louder is tiring, but Cole Rowland is a show unto himself. Yeah. When he rolls out of the mound. There's a whole lot of Fidgeting. Yeah, we call Skeens must see TV. Yeah, yeah. Cole Rowland is like the most entertaining guy in the sport. <laughs> he's, he's, he's in chill mode right now, but not when he's between the white lines. Trey Morgan is up in a big spot. Morgan was the guy thrown out in the eighth inning the other night when they had the quote red play on, which is the contact play. And that's why he went. A lot of folks were wondering oh, why did he go there? And when red is on, you go. Johnson said about the plate, no regrets. And if you remember that game, it came down really to Wake Forest getting a clutch hit at the end, and LSU didn't. Uh, th this feels like a fantastic matchup if you're LSU. Now, Red Louder's able to make pitches against anybody, but the fastball tends to leak away to left handers, and Trey Morgan loves hitting that ball to the backside of the field. And he has had a tremendous World Series. And oh, it's snared by the third baseman, Brock Wilkin. <laughs> Last wow. night, Hawk hit one that White snared at third. Tonight, Wilkin snares a shot off the bat of Morgan, and it stays 0 0. You're good at this TV <laughs> stuff, too. A backside rocket right there. And Brock Wilkin go down to get it. Decent baseball game here, folks. <laughs> to the seventh, we are scoreless. Look at Wilkin. One half step, his right foot slipped on the dirt, and the ball into the glove. <laughs> Having a good time here in Omaha. KB, what do you got? Yeah, you can see the pink armband that he wears on that glove hand, and that is in honor of Amy McGuire. It's his second mom basically growing up, his best friend's mom. On the pink armband, it says Mamie. That's her nickname uh, in honor of her because she was diagnosed a couple years ago with breast cancer. She is since in remission, but he wanted to ask her. He said, is it okay if I honor you if I wear it like this? She said, absolutely. Back home watching him. Great to hear these behind the scenes stories about what Skeens does for Folds of Honor and the commitment Wilkin has to her. Six weeks ago, it all clicked for this guy. And he is wildly popular in the Winston Salem area, especially with children. He's always loaning his time and energy to special needs kids in the area. A huge heart. Oof, that ball was hung up there, and he fouled it back. Can we just talk about how good the players are in this generation? Paul Skeens just broke a Ben McDonald record. Right. Yeah. Okay. Brock the Wilkin. Unbreakable. Brock Wilkin broke a JD Drew record. Mm -hmm. Like, like those are two of the biggest legends in the history of college baseball. And this is kind of a record-breaking year, and you see them flying all over the place. Florida's got their all-time 
home run record for their university. But these two right here broke two pretty special guys, Marks. He gets the call there. Wilkin didn't like it. 98. He is a manic worker. Is Wilkin. Kind of got a little ostracized as a freshman. He was going to be the big man on campus. He got his butt kicked at Notre Dame. He spoils one there. Next day after he didn't make Team USA, he was on Cape Cod playing. He didn't sulk. He was on Cape Cod playing. And a year later, Marek Houston had a similar situation where he showed some bad body language, and Wilkin grabbed him by the shirt and said, not here. I used to do that. That's not a good example. Fix it. That may have been the continued evolution of this guy yep. becoming a leader at Wake Forest. That's exactly what that is, right? And it's one thing to take care of your own business. It's another thing to start calling other people higher. That's when coaches can start to take their hands off the steering wheel yes. and let things be player driven. And they'd rather do that. 2-2, mm -hmm. two, two, schemes, good pitch there, a slider. At 87 miles an hour, that's seven strikeouts for Paul Skeens. Kind of had to use everything that at bat against Wilkin. Fastball's early, then he comes back with this one. Slider's been so solid tonight for Skeens. I mean, you look at both of these guys tonight, and, and approach is a little bit different. I mean, Louder getting a lot more ground balls, Skeens getting a lot more fly balls, but the pitch count for Louder. He's thrown six complete, he's thrown 65 pitches. 99 miles an hour, easy. Flipping the ball to himself. <laughs> He's thrown 93 pitches. This is another day in Paul Skeen's world. The 0 1 to Bennett. That sails high. Is there a pitch count? You talked to both coaches beforehand. Lauder didn't feel great after his first start. Skeen's is back on a little shorter rest. Any limits? Uh, neither coach expressed a limit. Now, I think with Louder, they, they've kind of defined his limit throughout the year, which is about 105. Like, he just doesn't, <laughs> even when he's on full rest, he doesn't go over. Louder may pitch into the 12th at 105. Yeah, well, yeah pitch count, right the now. pitch count's certainly uh, in good shape. With Skeens, I, I just don't know. I don't know how you're going to get the ball out of your hand. You might have to ask Dylan Cruz to go take the ball out of his hand. <laughs> Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, do me a favor. Just go tell him he's not going back out there. Take I don't want to tell him. Game. You go tell him. <laughs> he's not going to fight you. I ain't doing it. That like that would probably be my plan. <laughs> I don't think he'll punch Dylan. One ball, two strikes. Looking for strikeout number eight. There's amazing run, spin rate on these guys throwing that baseball. And it was a great conversation we had in game with Skeens the other night. About all the things that he now realizes, and one of the things he prioritizes is sleep. Mm. Two two. <laughs> wow. <Okay. laughs> okay. Got buckled yep. and still swung. Skeens is having a giggle about that. Watch the knees buckle. We're gonna go knee buckle, and this we call this emergency hack. That's that <laughs> That's is an beautiful. emergency hack. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. when you know your stuff's really good. He went fastball. This one goes to right. Joe Bear goes back, and he's there to make the easy play. And there are two down. So I mean, I mean, this ballpark is so big today, and these pitchers are so good. Who is going to score, and how are they going to score? Neither pitcher is making any mistakes. Yeah, there, there's no free passes. Like it's unreal, right? We're, we're giving, and the defenses have been flawless. Tommy White has had a really nice day over at third base on a couple. Tough tries for LSU. It's probably going to come down to one large one. A little low to Danny Corona. He's got 13 of those large ones. Pitch number 100. And Wake Forest has a line in the sand for their pitchers. It's really 100, and then you're you're coming out. Skeen's last start through 123 pitches. Again. Comes again. Back to back changeups right there. Activity. Thatcher Hurd? Yeah. On that LSU bullpen. Yep, that is Thatcher Hurd up and throwing. Through 65 pitches Monday against Wake Forest. 
Yep. Oh, thanks for playing. 99. Two more punch outs for Paul Skeens. He's got eight. This is Paul's playground tonight. And Rhett Lauder's trying to get on a swing, too. It's been pretty impressive. Stretch time in Omaha, and they just keep on going. Skeens with another strikeout. Tommy Tanks enjoys it. Still scoreless. Uh, the only thing that's changed so far over the course of these first six and a half innings. Now the wind is blowing from right to left. Other than that, no ball really has been affected by the wind because these guys have been blowing it by hitters. Louder and Skeens. Pitching matchup that we talked about coming in has absolutely delivered. Between them, 12 strikeouts and just one walk. So Louder back on the bump, bottom of the seventh inning. And yes, the wind has changed. So now. You know, a ball jacked to left has a chance to get out. Gavin Dugas. It's a changeup that's in there for strike. Ahead 1-2 to Dugas. And that's pull foul. <laughs> the one walk came in the second inning. Talk about strike throwing. Ooh, wanted take. that one. That's a good take because that's a really good pitch. Right on right change up and and Rut Ladder is showing you that you can throw that thing to righties or lefties if it is that kind of action. That is getting jammed. Foul ball. Foul ball, foul ball Good effort by ball, Wilkin, too. I think ball. he thought and knew, you know, that may hit the bag. I got to go try to uh -huh. get it. Their basemen are being tested in this game. Brock yeah. Wilkin, they. This is a Dugas thing and a louder thing. Like he's almost playing on the line to start. That one just catches the lip of the grass and scoots foul before. Wilkin can get there, but man, they are really taking the third base line away from Dugas. Beginning for Louder with Dugas and then Beloso, who has, at least for this series, been as big a threat as, as Cruz and White have. And you can just tell his comfort level at the plate is a little bit different. 2 2 Dugas. That was a chance right there. Yeah. That, that was that was a breaking ball. Didn't have a lot of bite to it. Dugas swung underneath it, almost anticipating more bend than the pitch actually had. Just missed that one. Right off his foot. Ooh, on a pitch that just kept coming and coming in on him. That man got his ankles. This is what that two seamer will do to you too. Just Ow. all the way right on the shin. I I was I was not a shin guard guy, but with a dude like Louder on the bump, like it, it's a it's a smart idea. I wear full gear. Because <laughs> you're gonna wear Go one up of there those. with a shinny. Ninth pitch of the at bat on the way to Dugas. Oh wow. That's Ooh, two right of back them in that there. Louder thought he had strikeouts on. Two in this at bat. And now we're full three and two. I'll tell you what, is it down? I don't think it's in. Oh no, did it go? No, he did not. That's a huge at bat for Dugas with a couple of calls in there, too. And the Wake Forest bench is getting in the ear of the home plate umpire. But a big, big at bat there for Dugas, second walk of the game. Louder, there were two pitches that were very close in this at bat. Dugas definitely held up there. That was that was not a swing, but I, I can empathize with Louder's frustration right there because it looked like he had him punched out on the pitch before. You got to be careful here. Both pitchers, <laughs> 71 percent strike percentage. Wow. Both. Into the seventh inning. Hello, 
Oso just not seeing that slider. Nope. Louder's got him a few times. It's a swing and miss on that one today. No balls, one strikes. Dugas off first. Beloso a blast last night. Oh, he got one there, and he fouled it straight back. An elevated fastball at 94. Just a little tardy, right? After looking bad on the first pitch breaking ball, that, that double up thought is in the back of his mind. He just doesn't get to that one. And this one is to shallow right. Bennett come in, sliding and making a great play. What a play in right field. Hit the dirt. Lagrass slid and made the play. The break and the break has to be really good if you got a chance to make this. But Pierce Bennett straight in on that one. Then thought he had a chance too. Closed his hey, eyes. Right like Slip a little right there. His left foot caught the back of the right calf. He got one down. And here's Joe Bear. He's got 12 home runs on the season. That's in there for a strike. I think back a couple years, Kumal Rocker, Will Bednar was one of those great pitchers' duels. You want to go back a long, long time? Blackjack McDowell and Derek Lilliquist pitched like here it. in 87. Oh, and two. Oh boy, both Beloso and Jobert have just been unable to pick up the spin. They're swinging right over. It's a short slider, and they are just not seeing the spin. Such a neat thing, though, to see. You talk about your favorite staffs, college, major leagues, and there are so many different ways to get guys out. And you're seeing just two mm -hmm. outstanding performances by two very different pitchers. Physically, just different. The movement, the, 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 the ability to command three pitches, though, yes. is what's the same. Whenever they want. Mm -hmm. One, two. Yes, sir. That's some cheese at 95 as he elevated. We saw it against Beloso, and there you see the effectiveness against Jobert. There was again. I mean, you go off speed to get to this point, and, and louder. Just a two seam yeah. movement on this thing, too, man. It just takes off. I mean, he got a bunch of ground balls early, but still has the ability, if he wants to, still it's, has the ability to climb the ladder, and he does it right there. It's in there. Yeah. I don't know how you take the ball away from this guy right now either. Short stops Jordan Thompson. That's down. We've seen a whole lot of bat flips tonight, but it's been to themselves. <laughs> That's right. After the bat, just flip it up in the air and catch it again when you walk it back. Did there be a lot of tipping of the cap tonight? Yeah. Couple of ground outs for Thompson. Their meeting, we remind everybody Sunday, baseball games, Major League, London, Los Angeles, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Cubs and the Cards, they're there. And then at 7, the Astros are in L.A. to take on the Dodgers. We've got the Golden Spikes. we got Game 2, College World Series Finals. ESPN recognizes the value of baseball on a Sunday. And we will do it in London and in L.A. and in Omaha. After falling behind 2 and 0, oh, it's 2 and 1. That is such a good pitch. It's two balls, two strikes. The slider has been silly. Rarely do you have a night where both guys on the mound yeah. have all three going. That's right. And that is what it's been all night. He's got five strikeouts on the 2 2 jam shot. That's three straight breaking balls there. That one kind of backed up on him. Uh, something tells me he's going back to the gas here. Slow him down three times in a row. You might see that, that extra gear he seems to find when he wants a put away fastball. The six foot two right hander delivers again, and he picks up another strikeout. And he is. 
Very excited. We talked about it being an instant classic before the game, and it has done nothing, nothing to disappoint. Louder six punch outs. Skeens rolling along. We got zeros on the board. Something's going to happen at some point. But right now, it's all about the arms. Rab, don't worry. You got it? I got it. Yep. Here's tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. Let's look at both of them. So we're rewarding performances tonight because the performances on each side have been masterful. Skeens, seven zeros. Red Louder, seven zeros. Yep. Maybe we build it up, but you don't know exactly what it's going to be. It's it's maybe been better so far. Paul Skeen's back out there for the eighth. How does that read, by the way? Nailed it. Yeah. It's what pros do. Yep. Justin Johnson. Oh, that's a little bad. bit high. It looks like Louder's night is over. All sorts of uh, hugs and high fives. Skeen's is at 105, coming off a game in which he threw 123. It's a pretty good tell right there. He's got eight nine one coming up too, you know. And he just struck out two. Hey, come on, kid. Three one, trying to get the leadoff man on. And they will. Hey. A base runner for Wake Forest. Walking and louder embracing over there. He bleeds. A leadoff walk. Like that's talk about a little momentum for a dugout as we see louder getting all the love from his homeboys. And now how does Wake play it? It's the first time tonight Wake has had to lead off man off. Yeah. <laughs> Number eight. It's the right. third base runner of the night they've yeah. had. Well, ben at least come up big. You know, in a game like this, sometimes you think, do, do you try to get a runner or second? But with Skeens on the mound, that doesn't really bring a lot of value. Well, I mean, you're much more likely to get a single than a double. Sure. So, I mean, getting them to scoring position gives you at least some sort of life. But you got the freshman on deck in Wene. Like, what a spot you're asking him to deliver in. I, I think, I think the smart play here is take your swings and. Who knows, maybe Skeens, it's now four balls out of five here this inning. Jay Johnson going to go check his pulse here. Five straight balls, and let's give it up to Jay Johnson. We, we love a coach or a pitching coach that runs out to the mound. Yes, well done. Yep. And he did. Sitting here in the Wake dugout and Corey Mascara, pitching coach for Wake, just came up to me and he goes, how could you not love this game? I said, well, maybe if you're a hitting coach, he was like, what are you talking <laughs> about? This is the greatest college pitching matchup we've ever seen. This is basically Ollie versus Frazier. Mm. I could use a run, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Moose wants to come out on the right side of this one. Wait a second. This is here's deja vu. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this was the scene. The initial matchup. This was it. But I loved when when we asked Bennett Lee about it. He's like, I, I just needed to talk to somebody. Right. I called the conference. He didn't call the conference. I just I just needed to talk to somebody. And Bill Salenta was that somebody. Cue up the flashback. Yeah. This is exactly what it looked like. And maybe if they ended a smile, it would be the same thing. Lee talked about Salento, you know, being a dad. He's got a big family. We're all a family. He knows how to communicate. He can calm me down. He acknowledged, I was shaking in my boots. I asked Salento what he said to make him laugh, and he just said, I, I, he came over, I said, hey, dude, it's good to see you. Hey, how about we do this? You drive in the game-winning RBI, Manassi goes out there, get three outs, and we call it a night. Sound like a plan? And they executed. Now he tries to get a bunt down, and he does. And they will be no play at second. So they do go with the small ball. And they advance Johnson to second. Lee, a well done bunt. He's dan dancing back to his dugout. <laughs> so that, that had to be part of the conversation there where Bennett Lee wanted to, to ask, right? They didn't have the bunt sign on on the first pitch. And maybe Bennett Lee just felt like that's what 
That's what he wanted to do, right? He very I mean, well be. Yeah. And given his personality, that certainly could be what happened. Well, here you go again. Started the game with the three hole hitter Nick Kurtz getting hurt. So that brought Jack Winnet into the fold. And he has one of Wake Forest two hits. This is Hollywood stuff for Winnet. Get the win of Belmont Hill High School in Massachusetts. Ha! Watch this one go by and became one of the best prep players in the state. Pearson deep in left field, and when A holds up, they'll check it. How about that take? Yeah. Right there? I mean, this this young man seeing the baseball tonight. No deer in headlights for Mr. Wene. Wake Forest is four for 25. Runners in scoring position at the World Series. 2-1. Wasn't a very aggressive swing. I got a little fooled there. Skeens is not afraid to back up that breaking ball. Matter of fact, he, he has an 80% whiff rate on the season when he goes back to back. Say that again, please. 80. Yeah. <laughs> so that was actually a win by <laughs> yeah. Mr. Wene right there. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes. Go ahead, run at second, and he swings at one. It gets away from the catcher, so he's going to be at first. And now at third base, and that is a huge play. When they swung and missed at a slider in the dirt, but there was no chance for Malasso to keep it in front of him. And yeah, he can't believe it. Wake Forest has runners at first and third. It's a sweeper and a good one right here. I mean, that, that's a slider, Malazzo. Oh, wow. It's one of the challenges when you go one knee. Is he? You can't get out there and block. Him. You can't move nearly as quick. He tries to go backhand, goes all the way to the backstop for the first time tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have a base runner at third base. Call it a wild pitch. Merrick Houston, the nine hitter. Any thought here for safety. a potential yes. safety? Yes. Absolutely. Just to get the ball down on the ground. Strike one, and he finds a hundred in his back pocket. This is where we might see the athlete of Paul Skeens. Trey Morgan now creeping in even closer. That doesn't even look like they're going to really hold. He's, now he's going back. But Paul Skeens, Paul Skeens can really field his position. Here it is. There it is. The push. It is fielded. Here's the play at home. How good is the that? The tag is made. How good and is, out that? is called Trey Morgan. He came charging like a train and didn't hold it for a second. And they nailed Johnson at the plate. Berkey, there is not a more athletic first baseman in the entire country. And we talk about the glove work at first. He just saved the Tigers' season right there. Like a shortstop playing first base. And how about the short arm flip right on time? And man, Johnson does everything he can. What a slide here, but the tag just in time. Incredible play by Trey Morgan. On what was a great bunt. Mm -hmm. Wake Forest is challenging the ruling of out at the plate. The previous play is under review. This one's not going to take very long, but I think if you're Tom Walter, you got to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the first chance that anybody's had to score today, and you can't you can't take them home with you, so you might as well use it. I, I think clearly he is going to be out on this, but man, that is such a good, and he short armed it too. I mean, that play, you don't really even practice that one. I mean, it's not like you show up and have a chance to do that. Did you see Morgan on the right side of the screen? I mean, by the time he flipped it, he's 20 feet away from home plate? Yeah. No, that is called running downhill. This, this clip will be showed. It will be shown in every locker room in America on how to defend yeah. the safety because we talk about first and third. It's it's almost an indefensible play unless you have a first baseman that's that fearless and that athletic and he can finish it off. Yeah. And you know what. How about the two plays in the eighth innings at home plate by both of these teams. We saw that Wilkin throw to Lee in the eighth inning. The call on the field is confirmed. And now you see a play at the plate in the eighth inning made by LSU. Could very well determine which team moves to the finals. Those two plays, eighth inning at home plate, both outstanding. Be careful with the first pitch right here. Tommy Hawk's going to go hunting for the first pitch. Remember last time up, he got four straight sliders. He's another guy that is not afraid to use the backside of the field. 
Tommy White's ready and it's fouled back. An amazing play by the first baseman Trey Morgan. He's made so many, but none bigger than that. Jack Wine is at second base. Got to believe, right? This is Skeen's last gonna, inning, yep. right? We're yep. seeing his last pitches right here. It's how much is left in the tank. was positioned beautifully. Tip of the cap, standing ovation. Paul Skeens, perhaps for the final time, coming off the mound as a college pitcher. Just an incredible baseball game here in Omaha. Wake Forest and LSU, the winner moves on to the World Series Finals. Check out your first baseman charging. And that's what it looks like to sell out, right? Like, I, I am yep. coming downhill, and if it's bunted a little to my right or if it's over my – it doesn't matter. I'm taking away the bunt up the first baseline. But then you have to have the ability to transfer and make an accurate throw. And, Ravi, this is the one you referenced. What a pick by Bennett Lee to erase that run. Two plays, eighth inning. Tight ball games. And <laughs> – been in the middle of everything. And now it's going to be a bullpen game. Cole Rowland is on the mound for Wake Forest. Louder has not gone through a lineup four times, so they stick with the plan that has worked. And here are the numbers on this guy. 2-1, 208, 54 strikeouts, 13 walks. And they get a whole bunch of guys out there that, that can do it. 54 strikeouts in 30 and a third. Cole Rowland the other day. Retired all three that he faced, didn't throw a fastball. You're going to see a little bit of everything. It's a breaking ball, a changeup, two different breaking balls, and he'll throw them all at any point. And a lot of folks, after seeing Cole Rowland for the first time on the national stage, and you'll see as you watch him, he is uh, something to behold out there. He'll, he'll bounce the ball off the back of his hand. He appears very jittery, and he's seen himself this way, and he he embraces. All of it. Yeah, he, he likes being quirky. He does. Pearson, who made that last out in left field with that nice catch, will lead things off. So it's 8 9 1 against Cole Rowland, the righty. Two mile an hour changeup. Roland's curveball, a 133 average, and it's sub 100 on the changeup. That's how good he's been. That's why he doesn't throw fastballs. The other two are that good. Came out of Dartmouth with a degree, and now at Wake Forest getting a second degree. This one on the ground foul down the first baseline. 18% fastballs on the season. That that is wild. What was interesting is I saw Jay Johnson go out and talk to home plate. Yeah. Umpire between innings, right? He wanted to ask Travis Reiniger, like, can he do all that with a runner on base? Like, what, what when has he actually said he was getting some clarification on some of these mannerisms yeah. if a runner were to reach? Because there is a lot going on there. Trying to make sure a runner doesn't get on base. Rollins 2 2. Did it get Pearson? No, but it's now three balls and two strikes. Now that the starting pitchers are out, the whole temperature in the room changes. Three 
too. It's, it's almost like a it's got kind of knuckleball action. It kind of moves all over the place. At the change there. Yeah, he's still yeah. throwing fast. Yeah. From Duxbury, Massachusetts, Cole Rowland. Football and baseball in high school. Dartmouth and now Wake 3 2. No, he missed in. And there's a base runner for the Tigers in the bottom of the eighth. A walk to the number eight hitter. And all Louder can do now after his scintillating performance in which he struck out six is be a spectator and cheer. Okay, now you're, you're bunning here. Now, do you pitch to Cruz? No. Right, you're bunning here. No. You walk Cruz. Try yes. to get try to get the next. But two. then you got. I mean, yeah. you got to deal with Tommy White. And but no, Ribbies. I'm not going to take. I don't see why you take the chance to try to get them both out. Malazzo will try to get it down. Oh, and not there. Stay down. Slow your feet. Execute this play because if once he gets him to second base, things get really interesting. Wilkin is in at third base. Ha! Bunting here at the College World Series has been very challenging. We have seen a number of attempted bunts end up popped up into the gloves of the third or first baseman. A lot. It, it has not been a bunting clinic. Has not. <laughs> it has not. You know, and you go back to that incredible play that we saw from Trey Morgan. Was there was there anything you could do differently? Just softer as a bunter. Right, but, but the guy's throwing 100, right. right? So it's like the only thing you could have done was topped it a little bit more or caught it a little more off the end where it just takes another hop before it got to Morgan. But you feel like you did your job, though, right? Yeah, you, you gave it yourself a chance. Yeah. The guy had to make, make a great play. He had yeah. to make a great play. Malazzo's got six sacks bunts. He leads LSU. Pearson's off first. There's nobody out. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning of a 0 0 game. And that's outside. And if you're Wilkin, like Malazzo's bunny, there, there's really no reason to not just be down his throat. And if you're Malazzo, you got to get this ball to first base because if he bunted hard at Wilkin, he could throw him out at second. He got it down, and Roland has it slipped for a second, then threw a fastball over to first. So they now have the runner in scoring position as Malazzo, his seventh sacrifice bunt of the year. Now what do you do? Here we go. I wouldn't even mess with it. Nope. Just tell him to drop his bat. He's not going to be needed. You, you can't go home with Dylan Cruz beating you, right? You just can't. Well, Corey oh, Mascara is going to. No, that's not. That's Tom Walter yeah. going out. Uh -huh. we, we got pitch to change. Looks like Michael Massey is going to come out of that pen. Yes, he is. Walters made the decision. Roland is coming out. You can see the sun beginning to set here in Omaha. Does that mean it's beginning to set on this game? LSU's got a runner in scoring position. Michael Massey coming in. 0-0. Winner to the finals. The NCAA Men's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And as we have said, the wallet on that guy and that guy are about to expand dramatically once we get to the major league draft. Here's another guy who's going to have some more money in his pocket, Dylan Cruz. So it's interesting. You bring in a guy that is known for striking guys out. You got first base open. Is this to pitch to him? Well, I don't think you're going to bring a guy in. Well, I guess you don't have to throw four balls in. You just hold four fingers. In. Yeah. I, I, Anybody could have done that. So I think he's pitching to him now. It would appear at least so far that that surprises me. I just I don't really want to face Cruz or Tommy White but I <laughs> definitely right. don't want to face them both. <laughs> like you have to face at least one of them. 
Massey has the second highest strikeout percentage in Division One baseball this year. 47 <laughs> percent of the hitters he's faced. And the fastball, average fastball whiff rate is 18 percent. He's getting 42 percent whiff rate on his heater and 50 on the slider. So like obviously if you're striking out that many dudes, you got some special stuff. Yeah. The question is, do you even want to take the chance here with one of the most decorated players in college baseball history? Right. And a guy who is in that rare category of having struck out 44 times and walked 68. Mm -hmm. We got a now wardrobe malfunction here behind the plate. If they're going to face Dylan Cruz, we talked about this the other night, whether he's one, two, or three. But they did eye tests on Dylan Cruz and they found out that both of his eyes are equally dominant which in the end allows him to see the ball sure. a little longer than the average hitter wow. by about point two five seconds which for a hitter as you know how huge is that oh and, and you know Dylan Cruz checks all the boxes he's he nailed the vision test the s2 cognition test Takes like this guy uh, the numbers the, the production the yeah. career the makeup all of it now he's up against the dude right now in Massey that has some special stuff as well and we, we thought this one was going to be special if we actually get to see Cruz here batting with the go ahead run in scoring position it it even goes to another level and Cruz didn't just come of age <laughs> this year his high school coach said he knew in eighth grade he was going to be a pro and in eighth grade he would have started on the varsity baseball team. So this isn't new no. for Dylan Cruz. Dylan Cruz was one of those guys at LSU in our two minutes that everybody knew his name when he showed up. Yeah. And he has lived up to the hype the last three years. Bregman, LeMahieu, Nola, Gossman, Cruz. Here's dad. And it looks like Michael Massey is going to throw to him with Josh Pearson at second base to go ahead run. We talked about where Cruz's hole is. It's down and in. Massey wants to elevate the ball. Let me tell you where Cruz's hole isn't. Up and out. Like he, this dude can handle velocity and fastballs up as well as anybody. You got a little space in, and of course you can you can try to get him to chase a breaking ball. But you throw that four seamer out over the plate again, and you might not like what happens. One ball, one strike. Cruz, and he throws that one foul. So Massey jumps ahead with off speed. Louder takes a deep breath. There's Kurtz, the guy that was re-injured before the game, so the middle of the order bat not available for Wake tonight. How good is this? 69 RBIs on the season, a chance for the biggest one or two here, and that fastball at 96 is out. Back to the breaking ball here, right, KP? Yeah, you would think so, and I don't know if I'd be too worried about throwing it for a strike any of these next two times. Yeah. If he goes after a great, if not, we'll take our chances with Tommy White. Yeah. Oh, he got him to chase by elevating Michael Massey, and his strikeout rate just went up. A huge out of Cruz. And you could see Bennett Lee when he was moving in, they were going to throw a breaking ball. Set up for the fastball up, looking to grab that four seamer and just tug down on those seams. <laughs> Trying to run it just up and out of the zone, and he strikes out one of the best hitters in the country in a giant spot. And now it looks like with two outs, they will walk Tommy White intentionally. So wow. with first base open, they effectively struck out Cruz and took the bat out of White's hands. I mean, Tom Walter, he, he, he went to a different yep. script, but now you got Trey Morgan. And the last time up, it was a rocket at Brock Wilkin. Yeah, but on a two seam sinker, right? Mm -hmm. That's not Massey's game. A different, different arm for sure, but this is still a guy that LSU loves to see up in this moment. Absolutely. Oh. 
That's a decent block by Bennett Lee. He basically smothered that ball. With two down. Trey Morgan is 0 for 3 tonight, but he came in hitting 429 in the World Series. Six hits. Six five sophomore delivers the one one and it's now one ball and two strikes. Paul Skeens was outstanding as was louder between them 14 strikeouts no runs and only five hits. Tigers trying to break through on a one two. Hit hard to center field. Hawk came in, now going back, still drifting, and he's there to make the play. And the buttons pushed, worked. Massey comes off, and he's fired up. Rolling there to greet him louder, and the rest of the Demon Deeks. 0 0, ninth inning coming. We are back. The NCAA Men's College World Series presented by Capital One. An absolutely outstanding display of pitching and the bullpen of Wake Forest always the strength this season. Look at the numbers that we're putting up here. Third scoreless game through eight innings in men's college world's history since we moved to ballpark downtown. And who is that getting the bat and maybe taking some swings? That is Nick Kurtz. He was in the starting lineup as a three hitter. Very gingerly, but a rib injury that he originally sustained against Alabama. He re aggravated. I'm not sure there was anything that came from that because he's still sitting there, but a reliever is on. It's Thatcher Hurd. UCLA transfers 76 strikeouts in 54 and a third this year for Thatcher Hurd. Stuff is significantly better than that ERA. Costello, yes sir, Dugas, nice play over there at second base for a guy that's got some limited range. He went over and made sure the leadoff man was retired. Man, that is a big time play there by Gavin Dugas. Playing him straight up, right? No shift here. Dugas gets a great crossover step and finishes it off. A huge first out. Yeah, and a huge, huge batter coming up now in Brock Wilkin. This is a one man wrecking crew. See the numbers 31 home runs on the season. Talk about Hurd. He wanted to be a catcher at the University of Arizona. That was his dream. And he went there during a camp one summer with his buddy Tommy Splain, Arizona catcher. He said, I couldn't hit and I got beat out. But Jay Johnson was the coach. He saw it and he saw the arm and said, That guy is going to be a pitcher. Because of oh. things like that, 96 with some run. You know, and for all the attention Wake Forest bullpen gets, how about LSU's? Yeah. 11 consecutive scoreless innings. 1-1. One, 2-1. One. Oh. and one. Yeah, Coming in, what was seen as, as a potential weakness for LSU was, okay, what do you do after Skeens? But yet they've gone through this College World Series and had the best ERA. The, their bullpen has been phenomenal. Well, it's a green light special here if you're Brock Wilkin. And without Nick Kurtz in this lineup in a tie ball game, I don't know that you want a challenge right here. Three balls, one strike. Let's see what he does. He challenged him. That's a great pitch. 97 at the knees, outside. Execution at its finest. It right sure there. was. What a pitch. This went into right, and it stays up long enough for Joe Bear. And there are two down. Hit well by Wilkin, but two down in the ninth. 
This one may go on a while, fellas, with the arms coming out of East Pence and especially the success they both had. LSU's confidence in its bullpen is off the elevator. It is just huge. You see them walking through the halls at that Hilton Hotel, and they are puffed out a little bit, and they should be. Here's Pierce Bennett. As we get later in the night, the wind does tend to die down here. We saw that in the last couple of nights. It's doing it again. And then it's a second. On that line. Thatcher Hurd does his job. We're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Tigers with a chance to walk it off. The middle of the order, four, five, six, coming up when we come back. Wake Forest LSU, let's pan right. And we see a lot of the same figures. Those are zeros, except for the bottom of the ninth, where we haven't painted that one in yet. Only five hits in this game. We knew it was going to be a classic pitcher's duel, and that's what we've had, KB. Carl, we had to have an uh, emergency uh, medical timeout for Dugas. Ran over, got out a makeup mirror, had to have new contact in the left eye. Well, the old head in the locker room returned for a final season and a team that's got so many superstars. He loves the unselfishness of this group. So this trip to the World Series has meant the world to him and he leads off followed by Beloso and Jobert. Oh. Massey's just dealing a slider at 83 on the corner one ball two strikes. Late on that fastball at 94. He's reached twice. A walk and a single in the fourth. He grounded out his first time up. It's almost like a Pete Fairbanks arm action. Yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. Short arm. For even though he's long, dude, that's a short arm. Oof. Turned on that one. So it, it's elite extension. Yep. It's it's elite spin, vertical break, velocity, short arm. Like there's a reason he's striking out 45% of the hitters he faces. Shakes off the first, likes the second, one, two. Yep. That's a strike three on the inside corner. A little, little backup pitch. Yep. Let's pitch in baseball, Berkey. Backup breaking ball that everybody's going to give up on, and it just catches the inside part of the plate. You guys had fought a bunch of good ones at that point. Fastball up and just out of the zone, a good breaking ball. That one frozen. That's his second strikeout since coming in. Cade Beloso's favorite player going up, David Ortiz. And he sends this one towards Wilkin, who's heading over there. And he will have room. And Michael Massey just disposed of Beloso on one pitch, and that was anticlimactic. Yeah, it felt like Beloso certainly gave him a puncher's chance, just like this next guy, Braden Joe Bear. You this is a tough guy to string together hits on, right? You feel like somebody's probably going to have to do it with one big swing. Oh, for three tonight, and there were signs late that he was getting hot, and his teammates know when this guy gets hot, you can't get it by him. Ball one. Massey six home runs allowed on the year so he has been touched up a few times. One out of Joe Bear. Oh, Ouch that got right through. Did that ball actually did Ryan catch that yes. ball somehow it didn't yeah. never hit the ground did it. Oh. You know, Lee was trying to frame it right there in the webbing of the Ooh. glove and, and, and just kind of whiffed it. And at least looking to see if he's got a hole in his glove. Oh, oh gosh. Three balls, no strikes to a kid that grew up with one dream to go play baseball at LSU. Oh, he went green light 3 and 0. Love the call there by Jay Johnson. Uh, trying to end it right there. A 
again, three and one. <laughs> Challenged him, and Massey blew it by him, three and two. I have to channel the Jobu doll that his dad once found. Look at Massey. Listen to Massey come off the mound. The bullpens continue to dominate. It's been all arms in Omaha tonight. Danny Corona, half dozen homers in the NCAA tournament. He will lead off as we head to extras. Now there's certain plays you circle in games like this and obviously the play that was made by the first baseman to prevent this run from scoring the eighth inning was outstanding. Trey Morgan charged. He couldn't have gotten a better feed and then he made a great feed. It had to be a perfect transfer to Berg. If he takes another step you got no chance. It's that play you see so often the first baseman practice right to charge the safety and throw <laughs> the it off the pass. On the way now that this is this is kind of giving us everything. I mean unless you like offense but. I don't. So this is this has been kind of fun. You're all in on what you've seen. Yeah. yeah. Strikeouts are nearing 20 for the game, and you're into bullpens where LSU would figure not to be on the same level as Wake until we kind of got here, and yes. then they've matched them pitch for pitch, arm for arm. Well, they got a guy in the game right now, and Thatcher heard they can give them length. So, you know, this is guy that they've been using down the stretch as a starter. Inside to Corona. Oh. There's a little, a little Juan Soto take from Danny Corona. Getting your hips? Yeah, kind of come out to the pitcher, <laughs> keep an eye on it. His dad has been involved with the Yankees and Youth baseball in New York City grew up in Brooklyn 2 0. Oof. Took a big rip at it 2 and 1. He missed it. Wake not afraid to go to the Northeast to get some dudes no. now. See that. They, they, they got Vanderbilt, Wake, Virginia, all programs that love recruiting that part of the country. 2 and 1 left field. That sends Pearson back. He's still drifting back, still drifting back, and he makes the catch just in front of the wall. As that wind begins to not really blow hard, but it's definitely shifted from right to left. And this one got the anxiety meter up a little bit. Ball stayed in the air a while, KP. He just kept running. I, I, I didn't think he was going to run that far to make <laughs> that play. And I don't know if that you heard did either, but just enough room for Pearson to make the first out. Next up, Justin Johnson. Slider oh. called strike one. Johnson didn't like it. Fifth time we've got extra inning scoreless. You've got to go back to 1985, so it's been a while. Arkansas beat South Carolina. That one took 14 innings. The winner of this one will face the Florida Gators. Game one of the College World Series finals. That's the best two out of three. Johnson's got a double tonight. Got a pitch to hit, and it's a line shot right at Dugas. We've had some hard hit balls here recently, but they've been Adam balls. It's a rocket right there. It's like Hayden Travinsky taking some underhand toss there in the cage underneath. Charles Schwab field. Two down, Bennett Lee, her delivers. I mean, let's not forget, these are two of the best offenses That's right. in the country. Two of the best home run hitting teams in the country. This is this is not a just a ballpark thing. This is two pitching staffs that are just putting on a show. LSU came in 136 homers. Wake Forest 130 on the season. By comparison, Wake Forest had given up 62. So they hit 130 and gave up only 62. The 1 1. It's just a great pitch, 96. Everybody's coming in like a major league game, throwing 96 and painting.
Lee takes. Good take right there, especially after the breaking ball from Hurd. That's one that ties up a lot of hitters. Three, two, and this one's squared. But it ends up in the glove of Dylan Cruz. Thatcher Hurd got his team into the NCAA Regional Championship with five good innings. He's off and running again. Bottom of the third coming up. As much as we may be enjoying this game here and at home, I'm not sure anybody's enjoying it more than the Gators who have run through this thing 3-0. They've won them all closely. One run wins. Heyman and Rivera have been outstanding, and we know there's a lot more to this lineup. And their pitching is lined up. Kevin O'Sullivan and the Gators, fourth time that they are in the finals. They did win it all 2017. 7-3-7 seven, and seven, starting on Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, 3 o'clock on Sunday, and Monday back at 7 if necessary. All on ESPN. The bottom third of the order is coming up here, and you wonder if Travinsky or someone else is going to come off that bench. It's scheduled to be Thompson, Pearson, and Milazzo. If they get somebody on, you may see Travinsky hit for Milazzo. I would think that's the only one he's going to hit for. Bottom 10th, 0 0, winner to the finals. And the fastball, he's been living up there at 94, and LSU hasn't been able to get an answer. Just got to force that thing down, because if, if he's throwing it there, you're not going to hit Fastballs up, slider down, another strikeout. Tenth of the night. This is, he's got them both going tonight. From Massey, elevated fastball, do it again, and then come back with top to bottom slider right there. He's now punched out four. He's only faced seven guys. Ten Tigers have struck out tonight. One of Josh Pearson. It's a remarkable number of strikes that everybody that has got on the mound has thrown tonight. Mm. The power stuff and elite command from both sides. From everybody. Mm -hmm. Massey talking to himself. He's ready 0 2. Pearson saves himself as he swings at one and was just about in the glove of Lee. He started, so did Louder. And Paul Skeen's last game in an LSU uniform, very likely, was again dominant. 0 2. And this is a little blooper into right, and it stays up there, and the catch is made. Chris Bennett's had some action out there, and that's two down. And it will let Milazzo hit. You're right about Hurd. I mean, you look at that LSU bullpen, they're just sitting out there. There's, yeah. there's nothing yeah. going on. It's Thatcher Hurd's. 93 away, Milazzo strike one. Yeah. Herring, Guidry, how about Cooper with three saves? Yeah, he's been incredibly effective and durable. I mean, he's carried a heavy workload for this club. 0 oh and 2. No wasting time. Massey gets the strikeout and will march back to the dugout. We will do it again in the 11th. 
That's the strut of a confident pitcher. Why not? They've all been doing that tonight. The 11th strikeout of a Tiger hitter. Batteries draining everywhere. We got plugs out. We're charging things up. We have moved here to a gorgeous night in Omaha. And people still out there looking back and seeing this field slid up. Heard. Slider in there for a strike. Jack Winne. Eight, nine, and one for Wake Forest in the 11th. Just just come out there and bend a couple hammer breaking balls in the zone to start the inning. 60% weight whiff rate on that pitch. The thing is gnarly. <laughs> Gymnastics back there from the catcher. Lazo as that pitch had some break to it. We've got nine strikeouts of Vanderbilt hitters. And a lineup depleted tonight with no Kurtz in it because of a re-aggravated rib injury. So when a finds out 20 minutes before the game he's going to be in the lineup and wouldn't you know it his first at bat he delivered a hit also made a good play in the field on a high hopper. Two balls two strikes Thatcher heard. Swing and a miss he went 95 away and he chased it. First fastball the bat I think I think everything was breaking ball up to that point. Fastball from Thatcher Hurd glove side. Maybe just a little bit of cut away from Bennett Lee right there. Paul Skeens eight innings two right. hits nine K's and here's Hurd working his third inning of work. Huh. And that's in there for a strike. Same thing there, and he's still throwing 96. There's Gavin Gidry now starting to warm a little bit for LSU. Up in the zone, up in the air. Shallow center. And it's called by Thompson, who is there to make the play. Good job, Casey. About the stress that the guys in the bullpen are under when you know, man, it's 0-0. Uh, zero, zero. We, we got to keep putting zeros up on the board. Tough act to follow the pitching performances All of them. <laughs> in this game. Gidry starting to throw. There is nobody throwing in that wig bullpen. This is Massey's game for a while. Here's Hawk, which means Tommy White down there at third is ready in case he gets a line shot at him. And he's, he's caught those. He had one last night against Hawk. Lucas Costello Wilkin if they can get there but there are two down and the 1 0 oh. bends in there for a strike. Massey is wearing out the dugout as he continues to pace. Oof, that is great starts at the shoulders and just breaks down to the letters. Oh, no. 
That's such a leadoff hit or take right there. Yep. <laughs> yes, 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 no. Right at the end. Sometimes you gotta slam on the brakes late. Wake's last hit was a double from Justin Johnson in the fifth inning. So we're working on six hitless innings from LSU pitchers. Heard trying to get through his third. And Hawk, this is trouble here. If this is just going to die there, he's going to be on first base. And it does, like a swinging bunt. And their first hit since the fifth. Comes with two down. You got to smile after that one. Uh, uh, emergency hack chop up the third baseline. Trey Morgan giving him some grief on that. But man, at this point, Wake Forest offense will take anything. Yep. Tommy Hawk on the year 13 of 14 in stolen bases. Malazzo has thrown out four of 19 on the year trying to steal. And the 13 is about 80% of their steals. They just do not run. He dives back. Five foot eight. Tommy Hawk now at first base. Take a chance here. Yes, if you like the math, for sure. This is the guy that, that you take a chance with. Not going on a 1-0. And now it's one ball, one strike. So if you if you can pick a breaking ball count, one that you feel so it's breaking ball fastball. It's a it's a really tough breaking ball to be able to throw somebody out on. Hurts probably about one three, one three five to the plate. He's going. Well, that one's tough too, because that was a ball, and I, I know they didn't. They don't want to give Costello the red light there, but. Tommy Hawk had that one stolen. Costello, Wilkin, Bennett, Corona. 0 for 16 tonight. And that's out of play. So the two, three, four, five hitters for Wake Forest have not gotten a hit tonight. And obviously there's only been six in the game. But the middle of that order has been kept in check. In a big way by these great LSU arms. One and two. Hawk tries again. There's the throw down, and he is under the tag. Head for a slide. Hawk, as Dugas had to reach up. And into scoring position goes Hawk. Wow, Tommy Hawk is flying because this is a perfect pitch to throw on. A great jump, a perfect pitch to throw on. Look at how fast he slides into that base. Watch his left hand. Left hand, the one with the upper mid goes all the way out, yeah, just gets safe. there in time. That's well done. This play is under review. And he held it too with that oven mitt, and then his legs crawled up on the bag. Good hustle by Tommy Hawk, who may be one of the shorter players, but showed how tough and aggressive he is. If that's a wall, he's busting through he's it. He's running right or through it. And that's a Dave Roberts stolen bases. Like there are there are yes. stolen bases, and then there are ones where you have to get to second base to give your chance a team, your team a chance to win the game. And this is a what you would call a clutch stolen base by hand. Tommy Hawk. Yeah, hand is definitely there. Makes sense for LSU to challenge. <clears throat> After review, the ruling is confirmed. Safe. LSU has used one of their coaches' challenges. Well, that's going to lead Jay Johnson to have a conversation with uh, Hurd. Everybody's a little more careful on their number of visits these days. Sully coached them up. Way to go, Sully. Did you see Sully's uh, T-shirt? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yes, I can count to six. And that, wasn't that it? Yeah. He, he definitely owning it. You know when it's easy to own it? 
when you win. Yeah. When you're in the when you're in the finals <laughs> yeah. and you haven't lost. <laughs> He put on a masterpiece the other night. Every button he pushed yes. worked out, including push, putting Michael Robertson in center field to finish that one off. So here we go now with the go-ahead run at second, and that ball's down three balls, two strikes. Get the very, very dangerous Brock Wilkin on deck. This is a massive pitch in this game in the 11th inning, 0-0. Costello 24 RBI on the season. up with two on and two down and the guy that Wake Forest wants up in the situation well, we started the ball game highlighting two hitters Dylan Cruz had a chance earlier in the ball game Massey won that battle now Wilkin ACC's all all time leader in homers gets his chance What we got here? Oh. I think there was a, it seemed like that the communication from yeah. the bench to both the catcher and pitcher were an issue last pitch thrown. And I thought you heard Hurd say, call it, call it. Nothing says baseball like yeah. this in 2023. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> got to get our signals correct. So set the table here, Brock Wilkin. 71 career homers, first all-time ACC, and one more will get him the single season mark. He's just trying to make contact and get the runner in. Slider misses. Pierce Bennett on deck, although Kurtz was fumbling around with a bat in that dugout. Tommy Hawk is at second. He'd be the go ahead run. And Wilkin pops it up, slams his bat down. Cruz. Herd gets out of it. He made the catch, and he will lead off the inning. LSU, 1 2 3. Bottom 11, 0 0. Well, he's done it. Dylan Cruz against Tennessee took one the other way. And for most people that watch LSU, when Cruz goes, they realize now we go. And it had been a bit of a slow start. But Dylan Cruz now comes up in a 0 0 game in the bottom of the 11th inning. He will lead off. It'll be Tommy White and Trey Morgan. Most difficult part of the LSU order to navigate, but Massey has been masterful on the mound. One full time through the order for Massey so far he's punched out five. His season long in innings is four. He has not thrown over 30 pitches in an outing in a month. So he's at 33 now. He's stretched out a little farther than he's been used to. Starts Cruz off with the slider. You guys are looking at who may be the number one pick in the draft coming up at the plate. Oh and one. Michael Massey doesn't care who's at the plate the way he is dealing. 0 oh and 2. Over through that at 93. It doesn't play like 93. Mm -mm. That, no, that, it that didn't. Hitter gets there. Ooh, he hung one and that is ripped into left field. Cruz, the ball bobbled and he thought about going a second, but he put the brakes on. Costello did not pick it up cleanly, but Cruz takes advantage of a ball over the center of the plate. Well, that's the start you want, right? A hanging breaking ball. Cruz smokes it past Wilkin, who looked like he was playing no doubles, KP. Very close 
to the, look how close he is to the third baseline. A rocket that he can't make an adjustment on. And perfect start here for the Tigers. No doubles means more singles. Yeah. Tom Walter in his 14th season may be looking to go to his closer, Camden Manassi. 14 has been absolutely lights out. So, with the biggest threat in a long time for LSU, leadoff man's aboard. You know, folks are saying, now here we go. Well, Manassi is coming in to say, no, you don't. Winner goes on to the finals. We're in the bottom of the 11th, and it's 0 0. Trey Morgan, eighth inning, and everybody is hugging right now. Massey out two and two thirds, just one hit, five Ks. Only a sophomore, and you can see the futures of both of these programs. As close as we are to getting to a final and maybe winning a championship, locked, loaded, and ready for the future. Now, this is one that may not be there next year no. because Cam Manassi is going to hear his name called in the draft. 46 strikeouts, 32 and third. Excuse me, 32 and third this year. It's a mid to upper 90s fastball and a slider. That's it. Essentially a two pitch guy, but it's the fastball that plays most. You can run on it. You'll see it up at the top of the zone, but he is one of the best closers in the country. Well, he's facing one of the best hitters in the country. It's what you get when you get to Omaha. And these eight teams now down to their last three. Florida waits the winner here. Tommy White with good speed at first base. 98 runs batted in. Last time he was intentionally walked. We're not going to do that here. And the story of Manassi and Bennett Lee, best friends. Since high school, they played travel ball together. It was Lee when at Tulane he called Manassi and said, you know, we've got some changes going on here. Do you guys need a catcher? Manassi said, you know what, we do. Told Walter, lo and behold, here they are as the battery in Omaha in a massive spot with a tremendous amount of trust between them. will face the Gators in the finals. A no darter RBI's number 99 and 100 on the season. And Tommy White moves the Tigers into the championship. Doesn't get much better than that, boys. No, it doesn't. The stars were absolutely the stars in this one. And Cruz and White delivered in the biggest of moments. Tommy Tank sitting on a first pitch breaking ball. Cam Manassi comes in out of the bullpen, tries to land a first pitch, and Tommy White gets the head out. A no <laughs> doubter. Enjoy that one, young man. That'll put you in the record books as the Tiger right there. What a baseball game. I mean, the starters were everything we wanted to see. The bullpens were outstanding, and Cam Manassi comes in and one pitch into it, a slider that's a little bit too far up. Tommy White's now driven in a hundred mm, yeah, this 100 year runs. 99 and a hundred right there. Tommy White walks him off and LSU and Florida will play for the national championship. 23rd home run of the season for Tommy White. 
Man, how about again the job of this bullpen? This team has been built on the bullpen, but it was the bolt of Tommy White still celebrating on the field with Skeens. And here's Chris. Tommy, how's the heartbeat? Oh, a thousand million miles an hour. <laughs> oh no, I'm gassed. Yeah. <laughs> what were you looking for in that AB off Manassi? Fastball. I didn't get a fastball. <laughs> I was so amped up that I just threw my hands at it. <laughs> what did Paul Skeens give you guys today? Oh my um, an unreal performance as always. You know, we're going to have a chance to win every time he's on the mound. Yeah, he's, he's something different. You guys are heading the championship series. For all of us that just witnessed this, what did we just see? I, awesome. I don't know. I'm lost of words. I'm just I'm, I'm excited. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. You. Catch a breath. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. He was looking fastball. Didn't get a fastball. And I didn't get one. <laughs> but I, I hit him out anyway. Skeens uh, and Hurd give him 11 innings. They give up three hits. They strike out 10 combined. And LSU had five hits in the game, and that fifth one was the loudest one. The seventh time that the finals will feature two teams from the same conference, and it's the fifth time it'll be an all SEC final. Florida and LSU did play in 2017. It's very rare that it lives up to it, it and did. tonight surpassed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, this is an epic game in the history of the College World Series. It just, you got one against one, two guys that are going to play this game for a long time. Yeah. And then it ends off the bat of a kid that has been as good of a power hitter the last two years in college baseball, Berkey. That was kind of fun. Doesn't get any better than that. College baseball was the winner tonight. No doubt. And what does he do? Go see Cambanassi. LSU in Florida will play game one, 7 Eastern on ESPN. For Kyle Peterson, Chris Burke, Chris Button, Bill Palladino, the back bench and everybody involved with it. The home run from Tommy Tanks, outstanding. I'm Carl Ravick, so long. Sports Center is next, and we'll see you again on Saturday from Omaha.